All right. Okay. We're going to be live this morning. Hopefully we're live. Everybody hear me? Everybody see me okay? Looks good on my end. Um, let me know if you guys see anything on your end. If it starts skipping or dropping again, we can yell at Verizon and we can be really upset at them. Um, so what's up, everybody? I'm Jeremy LaRose. I'm going to be your judge for today. We're going to be going over the riding portion of our adults section of the horse show. So we did the children's um, a couple days ago. This is day three of our live judging. If you guys missed the other... Um, other shows, you can go back and watch those on my YouTube, maybe scroll through Facebook on LaRose Show Horses and uh, find them there. But uh, what we've been doing is we've been going over these placings live. You guys have been getting a live insight into my views. Um, I have saved watching all of these patterns, all of these classes for the live section. So I have not seen these. You're watching them for the first time with me as well. Um, hopefully we can find some, uh, some faults and errors and some good things about these patterns. We can call mistakes as we see them and we can call good things as we see them. Um, and we can help these exhibitors be better better exhibitors in the future, and uh, hopefully you and the audience can watch and learn and, and go from there as well. I um, want to make this an educational experience for everybody. want to uh, share my thoughts and opinions with all of these horses. We do have the English pleasure we're going to start with today um, in our breed. I show AQHA. I'm an AQHA trainer. Um, I guess APHA too now. I have a bunch of paints in my barn. Um, so I do a, a bunch of uh, all-around stuff. We do hunter or saddle. We do English. We do or equitation. We do Western, we do horsemanship, all of the above. Um, so hopefully we get to see a good example of all of these classes and we can go from there. Um, good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Stephanie from Kentucky, Mustang, Oklahoma. Good morning, Dominique, Arian, what's going on? Um, so we do have the chat pulled up on the side, so I have you guys over here. So this will be the chat, you can see it right here. It's over my other monitor. Um, if you guys have questions, comments, concerns, feel free to send them over and I will address them as we go. So again, there's a new format for everybody. We're kind of learning as we go. We're kind of figuring out the best way to do things. Do have my score sheets here. We have uh, every class got a score. And we'll be adding those up, tallying things up as we go. Um, if I have to pause videos to make notes, we will do that. Um, so if you wonder why we're paused, if we're not, rolling through these patterns. That's what I'm doing, making notes on the other side. We do have all of the entries here, so if I miss somebody, if you think that you submitted a pattern and we did not get a chance to see it, then you can find it over here um, and let me know. But I should be able to get everybody loaded up. We have uh, a little bit smaller classes this evening, this afternoon. We're gonna try to do all the English this morning. Hopefully we get through the equitation and the pleasure this morning. Maybe we'll take a break for lunch and come back and do the Western. This should be our final day. Um, we'll kind of see how we go, but um, yeah, so hopefully we can we can roll through everything today and get going. I've got four in this class. We got four entered over here, so we should have everybody that we need. So this is gonna be the English pleasure. We'll get started. Um, I am going to. No, I'm alright. Okay, perfect. Cool. So we can go ahead and get started here. We got Whiskey River Shooter with Summer Crosby in the Senior Novice English Pleasure. So this is the Senior Novice English Pleasure. Good morning. I went and drew my patients fast this morning to make this make this meetup. Wow, that's awesome. Nice job. Um, so we do have people all over the world tuning in. So if you guys enjoy the global audience here, we have people from the US, from New Zealand, from Australia, Canada, all over the place. Lehigh, Utah. Good morning, Heather. Um, so yeah, feel free to chat over there in the comments. Uh, leave comments on the video. If you like it, like it. If you heart it, heart it. And if you share it, share it. Um, the more people that see this, I think the better everybody will be. Um, again, I'm just one man, just one man's opinion here from Michigan. Um, take it or leave it as you may if you don't like it. Don't listen to it, right? But um, want to make everybody better, uh, and hopefully we we learn from a judge's standpoint, from a trainer's standpoint, um, the things that I would do different and the things that I would try to fix to be better placing in the future. Awesome. So let's go ahead and get started. Summer Crosby, Senior English Pleasure. We're gonna watch this. Um, we'll probably watch them a little bit individually, maybe bounce around a little bit. If you guys have trouble keeping up with me, remember the replay will be available. Um, I do tend to go a little bit fast as I do have a lot going on, right? Good morning from North Dakota. What's up? Good morning, Amanda. All right, so we can go ahead and get started here. Let me make sure the stream is up, chat is up, have my score sheet, and go. So right away, we kind of make a, a, a judgment call on this horse. We say, you know, for an English pleasure horse, I'd like to see him in the bridle, right? We're a little bit out of the bridle, we're a little bit above her hands. Um, this top line right here does not bode well for being round and framed up, right? So remember, in English class, um, any rail class, you're looking for frame, we're looking for picture. So we do have this horse kind of out of the bridle, um, neck kind of turns upside down on us. So we are going to want to get this horse into the bridle, onto our hands, um, so that he's able to do the rest of these gears appropriately. Um, it'll be interesting to see how she goes from here. So, and I, I mean, this is a horse show, right? So we do want to make sure that uh, we have, thank you, Aaron. Um, we do want to make sure that we have these horses bridled up, framed up in a picture. Um, it, it's, 
It's hard because as a horse show, it's not a, it's not a talent show, right? It's not my job to try to sort through and see like, well, would this horse be really good like it if he was broke? We do have to judge what we're presented with today. So we are going to try to sort out these four exhibitors and then the other classes will sort out the other ones based on what we see today. So it's, it's more important that you have your horse framed up in a, a position that's consistent and comfortable to watch um, that he can maintain all the way around the arena, right? So remember that the difference between a type of horse show like this, an online horse show where I can replay and rewatch things, is that at a real horse show, we'd kind of get a look of everybody going around and it would look a little bit more like this. We go, okay, do we like it? I do like this one. Okay, do we like it? Yeah, okay. Okay, do we like this one? Yep, that one looks nice. Then we go back to here and we're watching this one go. And we can kind of just sort around the arena like this. This is closer to the feeling of an actual horse show where you're gonna get just a couple, oh, I have some volume. Um, let me make sure I mute all these. So just remember that, whoops, that's not what I wanna do. Um, Remember that when you watch this, it's a little bit different format so that you guys are gonna have, um, have to keep in mind that this is what a real horse show feels like. We see just a touch of every horse. Um, but in this format, we're gonna make sure we give everybody a little bit of one-on-one uh, -on -one time and we'll kind of move through these, try to give everybody some feedback. All right, so that being said, we're here, we're walking this one around. Let me pause, make sure all these are paused. All right. So a little bit of head tossing here. We do see this horse just kind of resisting the bit. Um, that's kind of what we were talking about with that horse's head and neck above the bridle coming, coming undone. Um, we don't want him to. Are you gonna like charge your train and do this? This? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. My fiance Macy in the background needing her laptop charger. So yeah, you're very welcome, mother. <clears throat> All right. So we do pick up a trot here. Um, not terrible, right? The horse, it does cover some ground. It does step pretty close to this diagonal pairs, right? So good even diagonals. I do like the way that this horse steps close underneath of himself. Um, just would like to see him rounded up, right? There's there's certainly no reason why this horse wouldn't be able to round up and really get in frame, um, which would help these legs underneath, right? So anytime that he can drop his neck, he can lift his back, he'll be able to use his legs a little bit more properly and we can demonstrate a little closer picture to what we're looking for, right? That, uh, that overall rounded picture, right? We want our butt to drop off underneath of us or our head and neck to drop off in front of us um, so that he's able to use his back. We do kind of run into a tree right there. Unusual problem to have, something you don't run into at a horse show, right? Um, so coming around here, we do see this horse bouncing above our rider's hands. Um, maybe maybe splitting these hands a little bit wider, going back to some basics on this horse and kind of getting him a little bit to drop in on his wither um, and really accept the pressure of this bit um, will make for a much prettier picture. Does take that transition pretty nice. I like the way he stands up in his shoulders. We do bobble a little bit right there. He does kind of fumble um, his, his cadence. He doesn't completely break, but um, yes, Jennifer, these videos will be saved to YouTube so you can go back and watch them. Absolutely, great learning tool. Yeah, and so I've actually seen um, some shares on Facebook that 4-H clubs are using these videos as a learning tool and sharing them with their, their clubs and making the 4-H the kids do uh, uh, paragraphs of watching them. So that's, that's always fun to see. Um, so the horse does, does have good, good strong shoulders here. He does stand up, but the challenge will be, can he stand up in his shoulders with this neck down, right? So as we go to make this a higher degree of difficulty, right, where he starts to get more frame, that's a higher degree of difficulty. So going back through, dropping this head and neck down and getting him to lift this back while keeping these shoulders up is kind of the challenge that we're going for. So would like to see a level top line in this horse. That certainly is going to hurt us in this class. Um, I do like the way he goes around, though. I like his legs. Um, little fumble there. Maybe he gets a little bit lost in his hips. We don't have quite the hip control that we need to make those corners, but um, yeah. So good. So that's where we are with this one. We're going to try to take like an average overall idea. Um, certainly don't want to take like the best lope line and say, well, this is our horse. Let's kind of take a, um, an average of all of his lope strides and kind of figure out where we're at from there. So let's go ahead and watch this one here while we're thinking about that. Um, so this one, you do see a little bit more of a frame. Do see this horse a little bit more steady in his top line. Um, a little bit blurry for me. Let me see if I can turn this up. Nope, but this is as high quality as we're gonna get. So we're gonna have to look through the pixels and try to figure it out. Um, so I do really like the way the horse carries his bridle, right? So if we're talking about that frame, if we're talking about that with the other horse, here's a good example of what we're kind of going for. This horse staying pretty framed up. Um, do have good extension, good reach. He does step pretty close underneath himself. We do see these good clean Vs right here, right? We talk about how a horse's front end and back end should be here. We want the back end strong, reaching underneath of yourself outside front strong, reaching out in front. Um, so that would do create that good, pretty picture. 
good transition in the lope here. Remember, a, a pleasure class is not so much about where you do a transition, it's about how you do a transition. So I wanna see pretty transitions, which will set us up for good lopes, right? Good transition, we don't see this horse um, leaving much with his head and neck, right? He stays down in the bridle. So a good transition leads into a good lope afterwards. Um, so we do get to see that here. I really like the way this horse lopes, right? He really throws his front leg out there, um, stands up, really pretty picture. Really pretty. Super cadence, super balanced, very consistent, very, very nice. That's what we're looking for. So we talk about this class. This is closer to what we're looking for. I like it a lot, a lot, a lot. So I really like the way this horse picks up his body. There's no drama up here, right? So we talked before about that. No drama in the top line. So if you guys remember me talking about drama in the showmanship videos, so if you guys got a chance to catch those, <coughs> excuse me, we talked about drama where that rider's upper body is doing a lot of stuff and it's kind of distracting me from what's happening with the overall showmanship picture. If the horse's head and neck flips up, um, it's just drama stuff and I don't want any drama. So from the waist up and our exhibitors and showmanship or from our hip or our, I guess our, our midline up, so this horse's belly line up, I don't want any extra stuff happening. I want all the drama happening beneath this. Um, all the action happens in the legs, okay? So same thing for our showmanship exhibitors. I want all the action to happen below their waist. So this is our horse's waist right here. This is this bottom line, this midline of our horse. I want everything to be happening below the midline. I want everything above that to be super steady. So we do see this horse pretty rock solid up top. Um, really, really nice go that way. So good first direction. So we go to this one, we kind of see the same kind of thing. Um, horse is a little bit out of frame here, a little bit hollowed out in his back. So anytime you get this head and neck up like this, this neck, is, this back is gonna hollow out. We do see that her saddle is kind of sitting in the valley, right? So if we, we talk about frame, we were kind of looking for this picture where we're dropped off in front, we're dropped off behind, right? There's my finger, dropped off behind and our rider is the peak of the mountain, right? So we want the rider sitting up high. So in this class, we do see that this horse is a little bit inverted, right? He's more right here. Our rider is sitting right here in the valley between his hips, his loin, and his head and neck, right? So looking for this roundness, looking for collection, right? Looking for collection and drive and pulsion from behind. Um, I would worry in a position like this with this horse's head up and kind of hollowed out behind um, that he's going to be pulling himself along up front. I do apologize if I cough and stuff. I did get into a bunch of dust yesterday. I'm super allergic to dust. Not a great position for horse trainer slash judge to be in, I know, but... So um, going along here, a little bit, uh, maybe not so much showy, right? Good morning, Lynn. Maybe not so much like showy. She's kind of guarding this horse. I want to see someone who can keep their hands out in front, trust this horse all the time. We do see her check back a little bit and say, you know what? I don't know if this guy is going to stay with me through this transition, all right? So we do kind of end up bouncing off of his hands. We do want to switch our hands here. Um, she's kind of riding with those reins through here like this. I want to see someone like this. Um, so it's actually like flipping your grip on those reins. So if you're here underneath, let's switch to on top so we can get this horse shuffled down wide and really work on getting him in the bridle. The reins are kind of long here. We do end up kind of posting off of our hands or, or sit running. Yeah, so we're a little bit unsure. Um, we do want to work on our riding ability so we're not posting off this horse's face and kind of leaning with our hands, right? Um, the Your riding ability is going to matter make a huge difference in how consistent your horse can be, right? If we want him to be consistent and solid underneath, we've got to be pretty consistent and solid up top. Um, for the English pleasure, a hunter saddle slash Western pleasure class, any of those rail classes, your ability to be consistent with the way you come in, with the way you move your feet, and your ability to be rhythmic is certainly going to help or hinder our horse as he tries to be consistent and rhythmic underneath of us. So just a stronger riding ability here. We want to pull these legs underneath of us so we can get our post a lot stronger here. Maybe be an asset to our horse, right? Remember, this is... Uh, this is a dance, right? So we talked about that in showmanship. You are, you guys are partners, okay? So moving together is really, really important. So pulling these legs back, probably shortening these stirrups a bit um, so we can use our stirrups. We do have kind of a soft guarded post here, um, just lacking the confidence in the riding ability that we see with the other one. But I do like the way the horse trots, right? He does, uh, does kind of stretch out there. I would like to see him framed up. So this is why we're going fast here because we're missing that frame, right? So if you talk about why do we go slow or how do we go slow, whether it's an English class or a Western class, we want to talk about tightening the stride, okay? So that's the big thing you're trying to do with your horses when you're training and teaching them is tighten their stride up um, and make them be a smaller package, okay? So a tighter stride is a more controlled stride, allows this horse to lift up into the air, which is where speed control comes from. Um, we don't want to be holding him back. So thankfully, we don't see her holding him back here. He is, he is allowed to be free and allowed to move out the way he wants to. Um, we just want to see a, a little bit different level of training here um, that she can get this horse framed up. And it's just, it's going to be hard to compete with this against this, right? So if we go back to this horse's lope around, um, this is controlled, this is in frame. 
Um, that's kind of what we're looking for. This horse looks like he would be really fun to ride. This horse looks like he'd be a lot of work. Um, and we kind of see that in the way she has to ride here. Kind of a sloppy transition along the way down here. Um, we certainly don't want to see it take half an or half a lap to uh, to get that down transition. Horse does try to pull her hands out there, um, reach down, root his nose. So we want to get this horse broke loose in his wither. We want to get him a little bit more controlled so we, we avoid those situations. And like I said, just switching those hands so that those reins are coming out the top of your, rein, your hands um, will help a bit for this class. So let's see this one first right here, this other direction, and then we'll kind of go from there. So we do have... Um, not sure what kind of equipment. Maybe it's just a breast collar. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's Martingale. I'm not really sure. Maybe we'll see when she gets a little bit closer here. Um, this walk, very nice free walk, free flowing walk. I like that a lot. Horse head's just a touch high, but that's okay for this class. Um, I want to see him be somewhere in that range um, in, in kind of going around there. Horse does carry his head just a bit high. We do have kind of a sloppy rein here, kind of a loose rein. Um, again, I'd like to see that horse be down in our hands. Nope, just a, just a breast collar. That's good. Um, so I'd like to see this horse be down in our hands a little bit more, but it uh, doesn't offend me either way. I like the way this horse trots. It's got a good flowy, reachy trot. Um, got some float in there, so we have some lift, right? That horse is able to suspend up into the air, kind of slow these legs down. I like that a lot. We get loping. Horse takes the canter pretty willingly. We do have a more forward canter like we saw in some of the other ones. Um, don't have the, the complete collection, complete control that we're looking for out of like we saw in the, the Palomino horse. But um, we do get a little rumbly up front here. Uh, again, we are wrapped, so it's a little bit hard to tell, but we do pick up a little bit of knee. I wanna see a horse that stays close to the ground um, and a little bit sloppy transition there on the way down. So wouldn't mind seeing this horse be able to tuck right down into a transition. We do get a little bit of root right there um, where this horse is gonna lose some points for, for not willingly accepting the bridle. Do have a fancy saddle pad though. I do like that shiny saddle pad. So we'll watch this second direction a little bit here um, and kind of go from there. So here's our down transition coming around. We'll let these play out. <clears throat> I'll do my best to stay hydrated so I'm not coughing in you guys' ears. Um, <clears throat> so we do reverse at the trot right there, a little bit higher degree difficulty. Certainly don't have to do that. You could probably walk around that transition. Um, and again, so these classes, don't make them harder on yourselves than you have to be, right? The class itself is already very difficult. Um, you already have competitors to show against. So we do want to make sure that we, uh, we get these horses to where... Um, a little bit under control, make this class easier. And that's why I tell people all the time when you go to horse shows is don't, uh, don't do a lot of passing. Try to make your path around the arena as smooth as possible so you don't turn a pleasure class into a horsemanship class um, or, in this case, an English pleasure class into an equitation class by having to handle and maneuver your horse around. We are on the wrong diagonal here. It doesn't bother me for a hunter class, um, English pleasure class, but we would want to make sure that we're on the correct diagonal, if only to drive our horse's legs a little bit harder around here, right? So if we're following that outside front leg, we can kind of push that around and make him really stretch and reach for that uh, that direction. So again, we do kind of see this horse pick up the wrong lead. That is unfortunate. Uh, maybe she'll break it down, hopefully. <clears throat> we don't see that happen here. So just remembering that the positioning of your horse is really important, that you get this horse hip on the inside so we can lead with the correct legs. Um, we are turning to the right, so we want to make sure we pick up a right lead. So. That's unfortunate, but the lead we have right here, left lead looks good, um, horse head again a little bit too high. We do wanna see him drop in and be a little bit more frame depth. So let's watch this one. So we see here walk this second direction, looks pretty good, we can go back and watch a little more. <clears throat> Horse's walk is a little bit more guarded than the other horse. I do like the way that the big horse walks, right? A little bit more free flowing, a little bit more easy walk into that. I do like the relaxed rein. Um, I just wish these reins would tighten up just a little bit when we go into our trot and our canter. So I like the way this horse stays down in the bridle. Um, for me so far, this is definitely our winner. Um, I'm gonna move this one here. We'll move this one here and this will kind of be closer to our final placings. Just sorting this class out as we go. So love the way this horse trots. He reaches down in the bridle, keeps his top line really level. We've got a good flowy stride here. <coughs> Maybe not quite as reachy as the other horse, but um, but certainly certainly flowing and, and trotting out nice. He's probably not as tall as the other horse, so he's doing everything he can with his smaller legs. Love the way this horse lopes. Um, certainly a, a plus, plus, plus lope here. Engaged behind, rhythmic, engaged up front, flat, um, level top line. Love the way this horse goes around. Very, very nice horse here. That's kind of the, the, the picture we're looking for, right? So we talked about, um, we talked before about doing these classes and trying to get to where you're doing the maneuvers correctly, where you're functionally correct. 
So that's one of the things that I tell my exhibitors all the time. Try to get to where you're functionally correct, and then we're gonna add some flavor afterwards, all right? So this horse, very functionally correct right here. He's engaged everywhere. His shoulders are engaged, his loins engaged, his top line is engaged. Um, and he's using all of his parts and pieces to get things done. So this would be the equivalent of having a four-wheel drive car that drives with all four wheels, right? Um, all four wheels doing their jobs the way they're supposed to leads to a really pretty smooth rhythmic picture, all right? Where we get in trouble with these horses, we take four-wheel drive horses and turn them into two-wheel drive horses or even one-wheel drive horse where he's kind of pulling himself along up front or maybe not pulling himself behind um, the way we'd want to. And you see that frame, this is a good freeze frame right here. If you see that nice frame, horse's back end is tucked up underneath of him, horse's front end is tucked up underneath of him, horse is ready to do something. And we just, we kind of see that lacking in some of these other horses where they're not quite framed up the way we'd want them to be, um, and it does end up being a little bit uh, rougher picture to look at. So again, I do like the way this horse trots. It does cover the ground really nice. Um, just would like to see him a little bit more framed up. We get this nose pretty far beyond the vertical right there, just kind of lacking some control um, in, in what I would see with the other horses, right? And remember, these classes are all about, is this a horse that I would want to ride, right? Is this a horse that you're selling me that looks like he's really fun to ride? Um, I would say that this horse maybe pulls on our hands a little bit, maybe doesn't really trust our hands to sit on our reins um, and stay bridled up. So I would be worried about on a horse like this, do I really have control, right? Um, could I maneuver this horse around effectively? Is this a horse I'd want to ride and uh, in show? So it does look like he's a bit of a jumper horse, right? We do have um, kind of a, a jumpery look to us, but, um, just kind of when I compare the two, I would say that I would probably want to ride the first horse more than I want to ride this horse. This is really nice though. I like the way he engages this way. I like this left lead a lot better than a right lead. He, um, he holds the ground a little bit longer with that outside front and stays a little bit more engaged behind. So my, my right, left lead certainly better than my right lead. We do get to pick um, in a class like this. We get to pick whether we go left or right first. For me, make sure you show off your good direction first so that I want to find you again the second direction. Um, it's much easier to start at the top and stay at the top than start at the bottom and try to work your way back up. So just a, a rule of thumb when you're showing, if you can start your good direction first, do that, do so, so that I'm more inclined to come back and try to find you the second way. All right, I don't wanna see you the second way and then it'll be like, where were you on my card? Are you way down there? What, what happened? And try to have to remember that with all the horses that I've seen in the class. So we are on the wrong diagonal here with this one as well. Um, hopefully we can pick up the correct lead afterwards, but just, and again, just improving this riding ability, right? If we see the, the riding ability of the two riders that we see here, just stronger riders, which leads to a better overall class. Um, again, so it is a English pleasure class, so we're not really so much concerned about um, your picture as far as like, are your legs in the right spot? Are your arms in the right spot? Do you have your 45 degree angles with your hands or whatever? We don't really care about that in this class, but, um, Remember that being a functionally correct rider leads to your horse being better, right? So if we want to make our horses better, we've got to be better ourselves. So being functionally correct, we do get a little off balance. We're a little bit behind the motion of this horse. So making sure that you get up with him. She does switch her diagonal there, whether it was on purpose or not, I'm not quite sure, but um, does end up sitting too. So that's good. On the correct diagonal leads me to hope that we're going to get the correct lead. So hopefully we do. <clears throat> Trotting around here, and like I said, just backing these feet out of these stirrups a little bit so we can use our stirrups effectively. We do pick up the correct lead, uh, maybe a little bit rushy transition. He kind of does a transition out here somewhere. Um, wouldn't mind seeing her round that horse up. Remember, up transitions are up in gears, right? You go from a walk to a trot or a trot to a lope. You're collecting up more, all right? So to go from a trot to a lope, we want to see that horse get more round, and then to go back down, you can kind of release things, let things come out. But a lope should have more lift than a trot, um, should have more lift than a walk. Yeah, so nice. So that is gonna be how we sort out our final placings if we watch these three go around. Um, we can kind of watch this last little bit here. So watching this one, this is gonna be our winner. Um, we can go back to our trot and our lope here. This is gonna be our winner. This is um, a really nice horse. I like the way he goes around. He looks like he'd be really fun to ride. Looks like he's got a nice flowy ground covering trot, really sweepy big lope. Um, I like his top line, I like his legs, and uh, I, I really enjoy the way he's doing things here. So um, this is gonna be our second place horse. Uh, again, just a little bit better to the left than the right, but he does have a, a, a good picture, a good frame, good impulsion from behind. Um, looks like he go over jumps, but this is Hunter under saddle um, or English on the flat. So not really looking for a jumper horse here. Um, Want to see the Hunter on a saddle, right? The long and low sweepy strides. Does pick up his knees, ends up being up off the dirt a little bit more than some of these other ones, um, or certainly than our winner. So I want to see long and low strides in the Hunter on a saddle class or an English pleasure class. Um, don't want to see the high strides like a jumper, okay? So there's our final placings for this class right here. Here's our winner. 
here's our second place horse, here's our third place horse, and here's our fourth place horse. So I will write that down and we will load up the next class. So congratulations, Elise Kreiner on winning this class. Very, very nice horse. Um, and, and the hard part about this is because we don't, um, because we don't score a rail class so much, um, it's hard to know where we're at. But I would say that uh, Elise kind of in a class of her own here, right? If we could place her first, if we had a bigger class, we'd probably see some people in the middle here kind of all by herself as far as like, she won this class and it goes one, two, right? First and second. But for me, this is um, this is a different level of training, different level of broke for our horse here, different level of presentation um, than we see in the, the other three exhibitors. So the gap is only one placing, but to me, the, the actual scoring is, is much different, right? There's a bigger gap than we see here between uh, first and second and third and fourth here. So we're gonna go Darcy Shots, uh, Caitlin, and Summer Crosby. And again, like these two horses could be very, very nice horses. We just unfortunately don't get a chance to see that today um, with the way that they're presented, that we, we do make an unfortunate bobble here that takes us out of the placing. And then um, we, we just need to be, make sure that we get a little bit higher level of, of broke here, a little bit higher level of training um, to be able to compete with these, right? You never know what kind of competition you're gonna run into, but um, these two certainly, certainly have a, a more level of finish to them. Um, this one probably the most level finish out of everybody. You can tell she's worked hard on her horse. You can tell that she's tried to uh, put forth the best picture she can. All right, cool. Very, very good. So we can move on to the next class. Did miss a chat message there. Love watching Judge, thanks, Karen. Thanks for sharing this, Vicki. Uh, please share this with your friends if you want people to see this. Uh, hopefully this helps people understand why we place the way we do and what we're going into. So we're gonna move into the senior English pleasure now. Um, so this is going to be not novice, but senior. So we expect the competition level to increase just a bit. Um, we move out of the novice class. And I would say that like, hopefully we see that, so as a judge, right? Hopefully we see that Palomino horse again in the senior pleasure and not just the novice, right? I don't know if in this show you're allowed to enter both, but um, I would say that that's probably closer to a senior level of horse or an open level of horse than a novice level of horse, right? That's, that's a lot of horse for that class. Um, unfortunately, I guess we don't get to see him again. Um, but I would say that Elise and she's kryptonite certainly could compete in some of the other classes. Um, you're ready to move up into the amateur or the open level of showing. So we've got this one, we've got this Chevy's rocking. Um, and we can kind of start with this one. This is a senior English pleasure and we can go from there. Let me write this down. So we have All right, let's see what we got here. So again, right off the bat, we make a judgment call. Horse does leave the bridle just a touch. She is gonna to try to recover here, but we see that kind of hesitation to be framed up, right? This horse maybe doesn't wanna be framed up, um, maybe wants to kind of leave the bridle and push on her hands a little bit. And we'll start this one up and we kind of go here. We do see this horse accepting the bridle a bit more, um, carrying himself in a little bit different frame, right? We have maybe a different breed of horse, um, but certainly a jumper style, right? We've got this neck a little bit up, but. I don't mind this neck position as long as he carries the bridle, right? So we see this horse stepping into his face, driving to the bridle. I really enjoy that. We see this horse engaged right here in his loin, really flat top line um, in, in really rounded up into that. So I have high hopes for this one, a little different style, maybe more of a jumper style than um, our hunter on our saddle style where we're long and low, but um, certainly a good look so far. And I mean, see how quickly we can make a judgment call. We can say, you know what? I like it or I don't like it, right? So you know what? It looks good or it doesn't look good. We can call it like that. Kind of go from here, we'll move on. Katie Haas, so going here, I like the way this horse walks. He's maybe a touch high with his neck. Um, again, so trying to decide where should this horse's neck be based on how he's engaged, right? We do see this horse drop off a little bit right here. Not quite the strong top line that we see in one like this one, but um, this neck should be just a little bit lower. We do see him bowing up right here in the pole, which is gonna cause problems when she goes to lope. Anytime this pole gets folded up, he's probably gonna pick up this knee as he lopes. Um, and for a hunter on a saddle horse, I do wanna see him stay low and close to the ground, all right? Nice soft contact through her hands, though. I like that a lot. Horse got decent expression, um, so we can kind of call that. So Miranda Schneider and All I Ever Want, we've got this horse. Um, again, I like this low top line. It's maybe a touch low, but um, we do have the rounded look to this horse, engaged behind, free flowing walk, nice and easy. Looks easy, looks fun to ride, very comfortable. Maybe not the working pace that we wanna see, um, but definitely a comfortable walk here. Looks 
Looks like he's enjoying himself. Very, very relaxed. Good expression down there. Looks through the bridle really nice. Um, so I like that a lot. Do have kind of a loose rein here. We do some, see some slack in the reins. Um, Anytime you get slack in the reins, you're gonna end up kind of like swinging or moving. It's gonna be a little bit distracting, so we'll see how this horse does the rest of it um, and, and kind of take a look at it. So going from here, we have um, kind of the same kind of thing where we get this head and neck. Just looks like it's gonna come out of the bridle. We did pick up a little trot there. Um, we'll pretend like we didn't see it. We'll just give her the benefit of the doubt that we were recording and we cut the video at the wrong place. So while we walk here, would like to see this horse dropped in just a little bit lower. Um, he does pick up this pole just a touch. Um, wouldn't mind seeing a little more level top line instead of just being a little bit like sweepy up there We want to remember that to drop this wither down and hold this shoulder up and stay engaged in your loin is a little bit higher degree of difficulty So having him be dropped into our hands and still maintain a good walk is kind of what we're looking for um, Right off the bat we can probably say that this horse is not going to carry himself in the same frame as one of these other horses Whoops, not this one. This one right here. Maybe carries himself a little bit more framed up um, But pretty similar so I like, I like the way this one goes. This is a good top line. This is a good top line. Um, different styles of horses, obviously, but so far, so good with those ones. So we come here in this one. Gonna start off a different direction than everybody else, that's okay. Um, don't, wanna, don't wanna make a judgment call on that one. Just pick your best direction. Show me your best way first, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So horse does maintain a level top line here. Maybe just a little bit high, right? Kinda see that horse wanting to come up a little bit. Um, come up in his pole, lift and elevate right here, which is gonna be dropping and lowering right here. Anytime that pole comes up, this is gonna have a tendency to drop, especially in these quarter horse type breeds. So she's walking along here. Um, Little adjustments out of her hands. She's wearing gloves, so it's a little bit trickier to see, but small adjustments out of her hands. I like the way that she can kind of softly come in here. Um, a good top line, a good frame here. Horse to head and neck on the vertical. Wouldn't mind seeing him poke out just a touch, right? Slightly beyond or on the vertical is fine with me. Um, somewhere in that range, maybe a five to 10 degree range here, probably a five degree range um, where you can be slightly out or slightly behind or on the vertical and it's okay with me. All right. So we got another one here. She showed two in this class, showed two in the other classes. So this is a little bit further out with his nose, a little bit different headset. Um, yeah, so she puts him just slightly beyond the vertical. There's that five degree mark that I was talking about. Just five, maybe five degrees beyond the vertical. Um, wouldn't mind seeing this horse drop in just a touch more. Um, she did do a rolling braid here. That's nice. Looks really pretty. Um, but horse said neck just a touch higher than their other horse. Um, we'll see how she trots and lopes him around, but the walk looks good. Nice and cadence. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Watching the cadence and the rhythm of these footfalls. A little bit of play in her head and neck. We did have a kitty running across here, so maybe he was worried about running over the kitty. Um, kitty causing problems for our class, so shame on you, kitty. Good. So we'll watch these horses trot. We'll go from there. <clears throat> so we're going to trot this horse off a little slow to pick up our diagonal but again it's an english pleasure class so that's okay uh, maybe a little bit guarded trot here i would expect for this big horse to be covering more ground than this right it is a correct trot it is a very very functionally correct trot he does um but it's more of an extended jog for me than a trot right a true trot so i would want to see her post a little bit higher a little bit slower give this horse more time to cover the ground um wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more effort out of him because he is kind of just floating this right here. Um, so would just just more trot, right? If we're going over and we're going to critique this horse, I think he's capable of more. Um, I think maybe we showed him a little bit safe right there. Um, it, he stands up in his chest nice, stands up in his shoulders nice. He looks good through the bridle, but um, now it's time to push this horse out. Let's get a little bit more trot. I, I certainly think he's capable of much more than what we see here. <clears throat> so we're going to watch this one trot off. So this is a, a lot better trot to me. We're really covering some ground here. We've got a big sweepy stride. Um, maybe a little bit high with his knees, but it is a little different style of horse, right? But we do see this contact, all right? So remember, horse showing is about selling, right? It's about selling yourself, selling your picture, selling your horse to your judge. So if she's saying to me, this is where I wanna be, this is where I keep my horse, he's very comfortable right here. Look at this great expression as we come through here. Um, really holding, maintaining contact well, softly in her hands. Um, I really like the way this horse trots, and it is a different style of horse, but um, certainly a high degree of difficulty. He's working hard here. He's giving us high degree of effort, high degree of effort with low, um, it doesn't look like he's working hard. So 
That's what we're looking for in all these classes. We want them to do high degree of difficulty and not look like they're working hard, all right? So I'm a big fan of American Idol, so if you guys watch that show, you see some singers that are hitting impossible notes that look like they're just effortless, right? They're not, there's no vein popping out of their neck. They're not like screaming through that. They're just effortlessly hitting high notes. That, that's what this trot is to me. He's effortlessly hitting a high note to, right here. Um, really like the way this horse goes around. Again, so this is a different style of lope than we saw in the other ones, but a high degree of difficulty because he is maintaining this outside front underneath of him pretty deep um, and really using himself well. We see this, this loin engaged. We see this hawk stepping up, uh, maybe a little bit weak behind. Wouldn't mind seeing him be a little bit stronger behind, um, but getting, the, getting the, the overall frame and picture that we're going for in a nice, relaxed manner. Look at his ears forward. This horse is happy to do his job. I really like it. <clears throat> So watching this one trot, a better trot than maybe we saw in the first one. Um, if, if we're given the same kind of top line, right? If we say that this was our trot for this horse. Um, so we're gonna move this one up a little bit. He's in the top of our class so far. And then we're gonna say, you know what? Like, I think this horse could do better. Same style of top line right here. Maybe this horse carries the bridle just a touch more. Um, but uh, yeah, so watching him lope around or trot around here, does pick up his hocks a little bit high. Um, wouldn't mind seeing him stay a little bit closer to the ground. But there's our better trot, so he does kind of settle into a better trot right through here. Really like the way he's trotting now. Um, maybe a little bit better than our first time that we saw him. But this is uh, this is cute right here. See, and that top line kind of settled down into where we want. That's what I'm looking for. Just wanted to stay down there all the time, right? So if we're schooling this horse, I always think of horses as meeting you in the middle, right? So from a trainer's aspect, if I want my horse to carry his top line right here, I'm going to train him just a touch lower. All right. So if he wants to naturally be right here, a little bit up in his top line, then I'm going to train him to come down here and then he's going to show right here and we're going to be really happy and have good expression like we see in this horse right here. So really like this second trot line right here, the second pass. If you got caught seeing that in the class, you'd be like, oh, that's nice. Right. Horse kind of looks through the bridle right there. Really pretty, really pretty picture. Good. So we're going to move this one up. Um, currently so far sitting second. We'll watch this next one. Oops, missed it. <clears throat> so horse trots off a little bit of rickety trot off um but now we see him going settling into those long low strides top line is a touch low right if we talk about drawing that line across our withers um our ears are pretty far below that wouldn't mind seeing this horse pick his head and neck up a little bit um but the trot that we have is really nice right so he is um maybe reaching a little bit further with those outside legs and these insides if you kind of think about where those feet get placed as he stops right here these are really close behind um I like this look a lot. I would wish that he pick his head up just a touch more. Um, it's pretty low. So remember, we want to get these horses broke down in their withers and then bring this jaw back up. So um, while this is a good trot, right, it's soft, it's free flowing. Um, I would like to see him drive a little bit deeper with this left hind. He does kind of get lazy with it. And then um, his head and neck is pretty low, but that's a really good transition to a lope. All right. So I'm going to say that she's going to be here for now, right? Um, depending on, and it's probably gonna be the make or break points to be the lope for me. Um, I, I do wish that head and neck was a bit higher for our trot, but um, it was a higher degree of difficulty than this trot, and so far this one's still our, our leader. <clears throat> so this trot right here, again, we don't really get to see the, the ground covering, free flowing trot that we saw in our first two. Um, this one kind of a little bit tighter stride, a little bit um, not really reaching for this. He does trot out, he does extend his legs, but it's not that like boom, flowy, really stepping out there that I like to see in a hunter class. Um, we do see a little bit wobbly in this top line. It does kind of leave on us a little bit coming through there. Uh, we end up pulling back with our hands and that's a situation where you'd probably want to pull wide to drop this neck down, right? So that'd be a, an outside rein and an inside tap wide so we can get that horse to drop down right here. If we pull back, we're gonna fold that horse up right here in his face. Um, this is already behind the vertical, so not much more room, room to get with that one. Um, so if we're still thinking about pulling this horse back, then we're gonna end up kind of a weird spot. It does kind of hold his head out to the right here. Um, hold his head off to the outside of the arena. So we want to get that squared up, which will allow him to drop between his withers a little bit more and clean up between his chest. So when he's kind of seated around those corners, he kind of lifts up. Um, this is a better picture right here. He gets his neck settled down a little bit, but just not, um, not the degree of difficulty, not the degree of effort that we saw with some of the other ones. So he's probably going to stay right there. So this one right here. <clears throat> So now we start seeing a little bit more of a floaty trot. Um, horse does seem to be taking a little bit of a funny step with that outside front. Uh, get a little bit of head nod with that. Maybe he'll settle back down as we go. Um, yeah, see, see, he does, does just have a little bit of play in this head and neck. Wouldn't mind seeing him be 
Um, just steadier with this top line. It kind of comes in and out of it. Um, he does reach forward really nice. I like the way that he trots with his front legs. Wouldn't mind seeing just a little bit more, right? Um, I think there's more to get here. You're going to need to get more if you want to compete with some of these other ones, right? These top three uh, might need just a little bit more trot than that to compete with those two. But I love the way this horse stands up into his lope. So we'll critique that next. For now, we'll move her up here. Um, and we'll kind of, because this, this trot was just super safe, right? If we go here, um, just not enough trot. If you compare the two, she was certainly working a little bit harder through here. Yeah. Yep. So we're going to leave her right there and we'll kind of go from here's our last exhibitor in this class. See what this little gray horse has got. So this trot, again, really safe to me. Um, we don't really get the, the lift, the float, the extension that we would want to see and that we do get to see in some of these other horses. Um, it's really clean. It's really soft, right? It's really pleasant to watch. It's just maybe not going to be enough. To, to sweep the class, right? So if we talk about um, degree of difficulty, this horse probably playing it pretty safe. I'm saying he's working at probably 75% of what he's capable of. Um, certainly a lot more to get here because this horse is pretty talented, but um, really, really safe to use. Probably like it a little bit better than the other horse. Um, maybe, no, like a little less than the other horse uh, right there. And, and that trot and this trot, pretty similar, right? These horses, um, this horse a little bit more typey, a little bit more looky, um, got more of the, the position and the, the type that we're looking for. Um, this horse is just a little bit heavier and um, a little stockier build. Doesn't really quite look the part, but um, pretty accurate right there. All right, so we'll watch these horses lope. We'll start with our top horse. We'll see him lope. Um, really like the way this horse lopes. Does pick his knees up just a bit. Um, kind of loses some cadence here, loses some rhythm as he lopes around. That's better, he kind of settles in. That's better right there. Uh, sort of drops out right there. Want to see him stay engaged the whole time around. This is a really good pass right here. Now he's engaged behind. Now he's got that cleaner rhythm and uh, a much better picture. So watch this one lope. A little heavy on that outside front. He kind of pulls himself along. Maybe he'll settle in as she comes around this, this arena, but um, starts off a little bit rough, a little bit rocky. Uh, yeah, kind of reaching out forward too much with that outside front. Ends up getting himself a little bit long. I don't know if I can get a good pause. I'm gonna put my skills to the test here. Um, I'm just getting it there. See that one right there? This leg just reaching out too far. Remember, we talked about tightening this horse's stride. I want this hind leg and this front leg to stay close to each other, all right? So I don't want to see this one jumping forward as this one's coming out here. So I want this leg to stay out in front of us or out underneath of us and really hold the ground under our saddle. Um, so this is the tightening of our horse's stride. So he's just covering too much ground with that outside front, um, which doesn't allow him to really get around and really drop in and maintain that frame, which is why this lobe gets just a little bit of rumble here. Um, if we talk about the, the lines of our horse, line of his belly, line of his hocks across his knees, um, want everything to stay really quiet around there. So we do see that in this horse right here. This really uses his shoulders well, stands up, rocks up into that. Um, top line comes up for our lope, which I really like seeing. Whoops, I'll pause this one. Really like the way this horse lopes around here and uh, uses himself. Maybe he falls apart just a little bit in the corner, but now we've recovered into a nice, pretty, showable line. Like this sweepy, ground-covering lope. Um, horse stays really, really nice. This is certainly our winner at the lope. Um, horse is really rhythmic, really cadence, really consistent. Um, looks like one that I would want to ride. I uh, do wish he would have picked his head up at the trot, but so far, that's what I like. That's uh, it's moving up. We're very, very close between these two. Um, going to be a judgment call based on how low that neck was, uh, which one we end up using first or second so far. All right, so watch this one. <clears throat> I think I backed this up too far. There we go. So pick up our lope. Do like the way this horse lopes. He really stands up in his shoulders hard. We see that more like in the, the second place or the first place horse that we have, second place horse right now. See that in this one right here. Horse stands up in his shoulders really nice. Really level top line, really smooth, cadence, consistent. Um, does pick up a little bit of knee roll as it goes around here. You see a little bit of blurry knees, right? Um, that's that knee making that upward move. Want to see those stay close to the ground. These toes stay close to the dirt. Um, but he is engaged behind. He is using himself. Got a nice little skip behind. Um, I do like the way that he lopes a lot. Looks easy, looks fun to ride. She's not working real hard. He's not working real hard. We're maintaining this position in a, an easy manner. So that's going to be our second or third place horse so far. Um, and we'll kind of shuffle these as we go. So we'll watch this one lope. So maybe wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more preparation into that transition. She kind of leaves these reins long. Remember that it's a 
pleasure class, not a horsemanship class. So I don't particularly care where that transition happens and I don't mind if you pick up and help your horse to set up for a good transition, right? If you're thinking about um, what your lope's gonna look like afterwards, if you leave him alone versus if you set him up properly, your lope is gonna be much better if you allow him time to set up, you allow him the ability to get in the best possible position so he can do his job. If you leave him alone, let him just kind of leave to his own devices, maybe you don't get quite the quality of lope that you wanted. Um, I would much rather see someone take a hold, set their horse up properly, and then take up their lope, than just kind of gun it and hope it gets better as we go. So we'll see how she lopes. Again, just like his trot, it's a little slow for me. This is a big horse. There's now she kind of settles into it. Um, this is much better here. Does kind of leave this outside hind out behind him a little bit. Um, we kind of see that when he trotted that we kind of don't have the roundness that we'd like to see. I think this horse is capable of doing more. I think he's capable of doing better um, in, in just lifting that belly more. I think this is a really talented horse, really looky horse. He's got the, he's got the look for the part. Um, just wouldn't mind seeing him engage this back end a little bit more, engage this back a little bit more. Um, I think you get a lot more performance out of this horse. But as it stands right now, we kind of compare the two. And I'm probably gonna leave these two where they are. I like this horse a lot. I just think that he can do better. That's close though. That's really close. Probably second direction will determine. Watch his horse slope off. He does pull his head neck up out of the bridle just a little bit. Um, does roll up. Again, a really pleasant picture. We see that in both of her horses. They're both very pleasant to watch. Um, this one maybe not so much cadence as the other one. He kind of loses his rhythm every now and then. That outside front gets out in front of us. Um, he gets a little bit scrambly here. If I think if we speed this horse up just a touch, we'll lose some of that scramble, we'll lose some of that little rolliness up to him, and this lope can smooth out a bit. You see a kind of bump in her seat, this little vibration right here as she sits down. That's just losing the cadence a touch. Um, wouldn't mind seeing this horse work a little bit harder. Probably gonna leave her where she is right now. Um, I do like the way he goes around, but just a little bit safe for me. Again, both of these horses I think would look better if they were just a touch more engaged. So watch this one loop around. <clears throat> See kind of that same thing, this horse a little bit heavy up front, um, a little bit light behind. Our, our front legs hold the ground a little bit longer than our back legs, and I kind of want this horse's weight to rock up and back. Um, does settle into his top line nice though. Does have a nice little cadence rhythm here. Um, loses himself around that corner. Maybe we bounce off that wall just a touch. We do recover right there. This looks better through here. Um, just uh, maybe a little bit smoother guiding around here that you're making your arena where you want to go rather than kind of bouncing off these walls. I think um, we're getting just a touch leaned up against that fence. We kind of look better out there in space. So maybe coming off this rail a little bit. You see him always kind of bounce off that wall back there. If you kind of watch this little pinball effect right here, he has to readjust right now. And then we kind of lose this stride as he finds his new line, right? So we're probably gonna leave him right there. Uh, maybe not quite the finished look of all three of these. We'll watch the second direction and we'll see, we'll sort this out. Again, love the way this horse walks, um, really clean. Would I ride my horse the same in a hunter class as I would a pleasure class? Not quite sure what you mean by ride him. Um, I, would, I would make sure that I'm doing the highest degree of difficulty where this horse can operate easily, right? So if we talk about a hunter class or a pleasure class, or by pleasure, I mean Western, right? So a hunter class versus a Western class, pleasure, pleasure class, right? Um, I wanna see the horse that does the highest degree of difficulty and makes it look the easiest, all right? That's how we sort these classes out. Do a high degree of difficulty, make it look the easiest. And that's true whether it's any class, right? If it was showmanship that you guys saw the last couple days, um, people that do hard things and make it look easy, that's what we're looking for. So the ability to stay rounded up and use your frame and use your back and not look like you're working hard is gonna be what wins this class for me, right? Like this horse really working hard here for his trot, probably the best trotter that I have in this class so far. Um, he stays engaged, he stays using himself and uh, this is a high degree of difficulty. The ability to do this high degree of difficulty and look through the bridle, right? And keep your ears forward and have good expression throughout. Um, again, that's just harder to do, right? It's harder to get your horse to try to work hard and be happy about it. Um, some horses just not capable or not trained enough to, uh, to be able to work hard and be happy about being asked to work hard. So I like the way she does things. I like the way this horse moves. Um, does take that transition really easily. Uh, wouldn't mind seeing, this is a big horse. I think he can move out here and be a little bit cleaner behind. He does get a little bit sloppy behind for us, um, but again, maintains good expression throughout. So probably the best trotter of our class, probably easily the best trotter of our class, but um, gonna be towards the second or third or fourth place loper. Um, 
So he is winning the class at the trot, but I think if we move this horse up, we engage this back in a little bit more, it'll clean this rhythm up, and we can get a, a cleaner three-beat stride across there. Maybe we get a little bit rumbly um, as he goes around. I think this is just too slow for him. He's a big horse. <clears throat> so, watching this one. Do you see an easy covering walk here? Nice, easy ground covering walk. I like that a lot. <clears throat> Guides well, stays between her hands, stays between her reins easily. Um, does stop for a second right there. Not sure why, but um, again, it wasn't just a, not really a break of gait, but just a hesitation right there. Um, maybe just checking her horse back a little bit. <clears throat> so I like the way this horse trots a lot. Does get his head too low for me. Um, he's going to take a penalty for that. If this horse picks his head up, like this is better. He sometimes gets way too low, like this is a little bit too low. Um, <clears throat> if he keeps his head engaged, keeps his neck engaged, and then he reaches for his legs and has this same kind of trot, he's definitely pushing for first in, in this class. Um, for the way that he trots. Uh, certainly our best loper in this class. I like the way that he lopes a lot. I just wish his head and neck would stay up just a little bit um, more than more than what it does. <clears throat> so certainly our best loper, both directions. Horse is just easily engaged, easy drive, easy roundness. Um, keeping that, that body, full body engagement, um, full top line engagement. Horse is working hard and making it look real easy, making it look real fun to ride, right? Really. Um, and certainly what I would want to see in a class. Video did cut out for a minute there. Not sure why, but who knows. Good, good, and a good transition here. Good clean backup. Really nice. Um, that's that's tough call between these two. <clears throat> really tough call between these two. Nice, good to be back up here. Horse really uses himself to that back. Oof, that's that's a tough call for me. Those are very, very close. I'm gonna have to probably penalize her for dropping the head and neck too low. Um, so we'll leave the places as they are for right now. So we'll watch this one go work her second direction. Nice, easy walk here. Um, really nice, like the way this horse moves out, moves through her hands nice. Um, a little soft through our transition. The horse is again playing it kind of safe here. Um, if we compare it to the other two, the other two horses are working a little bit harder. But this is really safe, really solid, right? And solid's gonna get you up there. If there are four judges, then maybe everybody gives this horse third, and then you go back and forth with these two, um, you're gonna be pretty solidly, consistently third. If someone says, you know what, I don't like the way this horse's head and neck was pretty low and gives him fifth or sixth because of it, then this horse, um, maybe works a little bit up in the placings. This trot right here, he does tend to settle down into a better trot both directions. I really like that transition. I like the way he steps up into his lope. Um, use his shoulders, keeping his body elevated as he goes around. Really nice, really nice loper. Very, very good. Does bob above that bit just a little bit. Wouldn't mind seeing him stay down in his hands um, a little bit more. Maybe keep this top line just a little bit level. Kind of use our back end more, maybe a little bit less front end. He's kind of using his neck to pull himself along. Um, but a good easy rhythm here looks comfortable to ride looks fun to ride um and i would say that this is pretty solidly third for us so far uh based on what we've seen in both directions <clears throat> horse takes his back up really willingly really soft i like that a lot very very good so this one right here a little bit of rumble here this second direction kind of saw that the first way too um wouldn't mind seeing this horse engage himself a little bit more kind of gets a little bit wobbly a little bit unsteady in her hands um but pretty nice overall this is our first direction one. Yep, there we go. <clears throat> so here's our second direction. Trotting along here. I like the way this horse trots, both directions. Um, does use himself pretty well. And good impulsion from behind. It does drive up really nice from behind. A little bit unsteady there. Um, there we go. It does drop him into the bridle pretty nice here. Uh, I think tightening up on these reins just a touch would help us be a little bit steadier with this top line. I think he's got a lot of room to maneuver here. Um, if he's if he's got this much play in his head and neck and we're kind of loose with our reins, I think tightening up these reins a bit would help us get this everything just a little bit steadier. Um, does end up a little bit unsteady for me. This transition does happen out in front of us somewhere. Um, horse kind of gets a little bit hockey behind. He kind of uses his back end, springs up off the back end a little bit. Um, kind of funny action out of his hocks here. Wouldn't mind seeing those be a little bit quieter. Watch this horse travel across the ground a little bit softer. Um, does pick up a little bit of knee here. Um, 
just just I think it can be an overall cleaner picture. He does stumble a little bit right there. That's because he's not fully finishing his stride with this inside front. He is dragging his toe across the ground, kind of landing like this. So we are going to see a bunch of stumbles out of him um, as he's not quite sure where to go. We want to see him really lay that toe out there and, and drive those toes out. We want to see horses land heel toe. We do see in this horse he lands a little bit toe heel um, where he kind of rolls that ankle over. Just because he's not finishing that stride out there um, makes it a little bit difficult for him to lope around. Um, does kind of lose his balance as we go. So uh, second direction for me, um, maybe not quite as good as our first direction. He's a little bit weaker loper to the right than the left. We want to work on getting him to drag this toe out, um, really get the full extension of this leg because he is kind of leaving it. Um, let me see if I can get a good pause here so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, right like this, right? Like he's certainly going to land and stub his toes, right? So it's kind of like running on your toes where he's not running from his heels, right? And landing heel toe with his foot. He's landing toe heel and then he's just kind of rolling over that. And you see him stumble up here when he gets loping around. Um, maybe it's the next lap around. I think it was up here. Um, he does stumble around this arena. Just falls down, right? He's just falling down um, and losing his balance. So it happens right up here. I do you believe? Maybe not. I don't remember where exactly what there there um, where he just didn't get a chance, didn't get enough time to uh, fully extend that leg. So uh, that that might hurt you a little bit. I think this this Chevy's rocking is going to end up ahead of you here um, if we see that better better lope that one way. How do I teach him not to do that? Just have to get this outside front under control, get this back end under control. Um, they've got to split their split their front end the same way they split their back end, right? So we talk about splitting our hocks. We want the definition between the two. If you watch a horse lope around, um, we can talk about it while we watch this one go. The outside legs are to lift, the inside legs are to stride. And in that horse, we don't really see the lift and the stride separation between his legs. Um, and he's just gonna have to uh, probably push him back up, get this lope a little bit cleaner. Maybe we're holding him back a little bit too much. Um, does get a little bit bridled up too much, so he doesn't have time to, to draw that toe across the ground. We've done lots of videos on it on our channel. Um, Christy, I don't know if you've seen our LSH Live channel, but we try to help people do just that, right? Get this full extension of our leg like we see with this horse. Um, really lays his legs out there. Was very, very close to a great line, right? Just needed that. He found his position a little bit right here. So in right now, right, he starts to really lay these legs out here. That's what we're looking for, where this horse can draw his toes across the ground, lay those legs out there, and um, really use himself around this arena. Ryder does lose her balance a little bit. Want to get these legs underneath of us so we can help this horse be an asset to him, be just a little bit stronger rider here. Um, and he kind of loses that towards the end, so I'm glad she picked that point to stop. A lot, a lot to watch for and learn. Yeah, great. So glad you're learning. Awesome. So uh, I like this horse a little bit better. He's going to be pretty solidly third or fourth for me right now. Um, I think this horse is a little bit more easy to ride, a little bit more pleasant picture, um, so we can kind of go from there. So we can watch this one go the second direction. <clears throat> Outside legs lift in, no. Uh, outside legs lift and drive, inside legs stride, right? So drive comes out of the outside, especially the outside hind, right? That's what the horse, that's a drive train, that's that outside leg. Um, so if you're driving your car, the right rear, um, if you're familiar with that, it's usually the wheel that drives your car, and then it's the left rear, and they kind of work that way. But if you like pedal to the metal, your right rear is gonna be the one that burns out. So it's gonna be this one too. It's your outside rear that is the one that burns out. It's the one that spins first. So all the drive, especially your lope, is gonna be created out of your outside hind leg. That's your first stride, right? So your first stride lift, everything else where the power is made, and then it strides through. Here's your balance legs that hit next, and then your inside front. Um, so that's kind of the order we wanna go in. Lope starts in the outside hind, drives up into the air, then your balance legs come through, and then you finish your stride up front. Um, so we just gotta make sure it's that three beats that we're talking about. So here we just don't see much drive being made out of our outside hind. Um, it is a little bit cleaner than our horse that we saw up here. So we are gonna switch these two. Um, a little cleaner lope right here. He does step up into things a little bit easier um, and, and is a bit cleaner, a bit easier to ride. Um, and she does a really nice job showing this horse. She makes it look easy. She's not having to fix or correct much. Um, does get a little bit rumbly right there. It loses a little bit of cadence. Uh, again, I would probably speed this horse up a little bit. I think he's a little bit too slow. Yep. Perfect, you're very welcome, Miss Elaine. Um, so I like the way this horse backs up. He's really, really nice. Probably gonna stay right there for me. Um, I think this horse worked a little bit harder to the right. Um, this horse, very, very pleasant to watch, very pleasant picture to go, um, but it's just a little bit safe for me. I think this horse executed just a little bit more, um, but she does a great job showing. She makes it look really simple. So we'll see this one go next. <clears throat> Uh, 
So easy trot this way. Um, again, kind of safe for me. Wouldn't mind seeing her push this trot out just a little bit more. Um, she does show it well, right? But we want to get a little bit more impulsion out of our legs, a little bit more drive. Um, I think this is just a touch safe, right? She's, she's trotting, but it's not like that sweepy, lifty trot that we saw in some of the other ones. Horse stays down his bridle nice. Good expression through here. Um, like seeing that nose just slightly beyond the vertical. Maybe he leaves a little bit right there. Um, slight fault for that. Uh, good transition, does use his body well. I like the way he lopes this way a lot. Um, very, very clean the second direction. Really clean the second direction. A little bit of rumble right there, maybe bounces off that wall. Um, yeah, see right there, whenever we get close to our wall, we just don't make that corner well. Um, I think teaching this horse to corner just a little bit harder, um, where he can really shift his weight onto his back end. We kind of plan our way around the arena a little bit better. Like that was much easier around there. I think uh, she didn't really bounce off the wall. And if you're making those corners like this, you're kind of bouncing off the walls and pinballing around, which tends to do it on this side more than the other. Um, that will lead to that little bit of wobble across there. But um, she makes a better, cleaner line across that other side. So we're going to move this one up right here. And this is going to be our final placings. Um, and go from there. So we're here. So we're gonna end up with um, Amanda Kloss being first team Nala. Um, I do like the way this horse goes around. I did wish it would have loped a little bit stronger. Um, I think pushing this horse up at the lope will help a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, so if, if I had to compare the two, I think this is the best horse in our class, but that neck was like too low for me trotting. So I am gonna penalize her for that. I think that neck being too low is big, a bigger penalty than this horse loping. Um, this horse very, very good though. Um, I think picking that neck up just a touch when you trot around um, leads you to winning that class more often than not. Um, and, and hopefully a horse that I get to see in the open and we can see that neck pick up just a little bit. Um, Cause I think this horse, maybe a better horse than this one, but as shown today, that neck is gonna hurt you a little bit more than this lope for this one. Um, but really nice horses for both of you. And like I said, that's very, very close. That's a tough decision between the two. Um, but that neck, I just don't want to see horses neck that low. So we're going to be Brian going for Baroque. Going to be our third place horse. Just made it look easy, right? Um, a safe ride overall, but just a consistent, safe, steady ride. Um, going to get you consistently safe into third, right? Um, these two horses, just a little bit more, the same consistency and given a little bit higher degree of difficulty. So that ends up one, two, three. This Chevy's rocking. Uh, I think this horse is capable of being higher placing in this class. Um, we just don't really see it today. I think this is a better horse than going for broke. I think he's more talented in this class. But again, it's a horse show, not a talent show. So um, do want to see him get a little bit more finished up. Um, I think he's capable of placing better. I think he's capable of hanging with those top two. Um, just want to see a little bit higher level finish on this horse. Um, Chrome Senior, Chrome, Chrome is going to be our fifth, fourth place horse, fifth place horse, fifth place horse. Um, again, so the same level of consistency that we saw in this one, this rider is very good at getting this horse consistent. Um, the ability that, that I've heard to show this horse kind of moves her up in the placings. These two are pretty close for me, um, that we end up pretty similar horses, pretty similar placings. This one just a little bit unsteady compared to this one. Um, I think she did a really nice job. So our sixth place horse is going to be Josie. Can't touch my assets. Um, Really well executed, um, just not not quite the level of uh, difficulty that we saw with the other ones, and um, just need to be working a little bit harder through things. But really well executed. I like the way this horse trots, but the way he lopes. Pretty close for these two for me. Probably go back and forth on any given day, um, depending on when you see him in the arena, right? So if we saw some of the, the best passes of this horse compared to some of the worst passes of this horse, he's ahead of this one. Um, kind of the same deal if we saw the best pass of this one compared to the worst pass of this one, probably this kind of placing. But um, as it's shown today, I like the way that she exhibited this, I like the way she showed it. She said, this is my horse. This is where he's comfortable. And he's got a great expression throughout. So I like him a lot. Um, Katie Haas and Heaven After Midnight is going to bring up our seventh place horse. Um, again, so whoops, just making sure that we uh, we get this horse a little bit more finished up um, and get these legs a little bit cleaned up. He does get a little bit sloppy to the right. Um, we want to make sure that we kind of open him up. I would say a lot of counter carrying for this horse opening these legs up, making sure that he understands that outside front is the drive leg, inside front is the sweep leg, drive, sweep, open his legs up and get him using himself just a little bit better. Lots of counter carry. But a very good class. Moves us into our open hunter our saddle. We have a few here. Let me close that. Let me load these up. 
maybe. Where is our open hunt? Open English pleasure. Only three in there. Um, that is a shame because I do see some horses in another class I would have loved to have seen in the open. Um, that is really unfortunate. I think I think a great open class would have involved the the top two placings for every horse. Um, I would certainly love to see that, like a grand reserve. Let's bring back the top two from every class. Um, I think that would be really cool to see, even like the youth moving the top two into every open class. I think that would make for a fantastic idea if you guys want to start a horse show. Maybe I'll start my own horse show, um, and we can take the grand and reserve English pleasure, grand reserve Western pleasure. Um, I think it's a fantastic idea. I probably should have kept that one to myself and shown that one to you guys as a secret. Um, but yeah, so if you guys want to take that and run with it, just know it started here. I think that would be a, a great idea. I think there's certainly a room for a grand reserve showmanship pleasure in Western, and maybe that becomes our open class. That'd be fun. <laughs> All right, so we do have Katie Haas with a different horse here. Um, did see her show the other class. This is a different horse. Um, this is English Pleasure. We have cones set up. This is the this arena. Do have a dog helper today. Uh, do like seeing that friendly pup um, helping us determine where we're gonna go around here. <clears throat> so we didn't have a cameraman for this one, so we're gonna use the arena this way. Um, I like the way this horse trots a lot. Um, a good, easy, free-flowing walk. Uh, maybe, maybe a little bit more down his top line. Um, does get a little bit elevated when he trots. Um, pops up a little bit. Wouldn't mind seeing him reach for this just a little bit more. Stay down in his neck because um, I think that he's just a little overbridled. We see this this piece of his neck engaged a little bit more than his wither, right? So, right there. Yep, just a little high in his wither or high in his neck. His pole is a little bit high compared to his wither. A little bit over flexed at the pole. Um, wouldn't mind seeing him get just this whole neck engaged. He kind of uses this piece more than the back piece of his neck. So we'll go from there. We got going for Baroque again. We remember this horse from the last class. Um, super steady, safe ride. Um, gonna gonna factor into this one for sure that he, uh, we know that this horse is safe. We know he's good. You know he's a good citizen. I'm um, gonna execute everything pretty evenly, pretty equally. Um, not hit or miss either way. Nothing to really fault this horse for. So probably will end up in a good spot in this class given that. Um, but if we were to run into some of the other horses in the other classes, uh, maybe we, we get a little bit lower placing. But this horse being really safe for me is going to count towards a lot. Um, does, again, get a little bit unsteady with his head and neck. But uh, we do see even strides up front. So just we're going to call it unsteady. He does settle in as he gets going. So we like that a lot. Just would love to see this horse start out as steady as he goes. Um, we do see a little bit lower top line than the other horse right there. Now he drops in. So we'll kind of take a look at this other one before we watch this one lope around. Oh, so she put both of these horses in there. Um, we can sort these two out. So remember, we put the, the bay horse ahead of the gray horse in the last class. We'll see how they end up this time. Um, so we always, as a judge, you're going to remember how you used them, right? So we do have the, the bay horse and the gray horse in this class as well. So we'll see how they sort out against the red horse. And uh, I like the way this horse walks a lot. Good expression on this one. Um, I like that happy look. We have the kitty coming across here. I think we used the same video. Uh, we saw the kitty in the last video. Um, so uh, a little bit of a, a safe play here by, by Miss um, Schubauer that uh, we did use the same video for both or we had the same friendly kitty doing the same exact move and that would be unusual. But <clears throat> So as it stands right here, we're going around. So the horse just a little bit less top line, a little bit less front end um, and maybe Maybe the same video for both, right? So again, I, I think I'd just stay pretty consistent with that one. I think I like this horse a little bit better than this one. Um, this one just uh, stands up a little bit harder, uses himself a little bit more behind um, than this one. I think he just gets a little bit rumbly back there. Um, doesn't quite have that split and step behind that we're looking for. <clears throat> so we'll see how this one lopes. I like the way this horse trots a lot. Um, you're really using himself, really driving across there, opening his legs up. It's a little bit fast. Um, Maybe wouldn't mind seeing him hold the ground just a little bit longer if we want to push for that degree of difficulty. Hold the ground. He does cover the ground really well, um, but maybe dropping in. <clears throat> We're going to follow our pup around here as we go along. Like the way this horse lopes, he really engages himself behind. Does get a little bit runny for me. Um, I wish he would go just a touch slower, rock up a little bit more into this lope, use that back end just a little bit more. Um, a bit faster than the other ones, but that's okay. It's not a speed competition. It's a, it's a roundness and a frame competition. Um, so, does kind of fall around that circle, does keep his hip on the inside a little bit, but tends to tip over a little bit around these corners. Um, shears his hip out a little bit around there. That's a close one for me. I might sort these out this way. We'll see how the second direction goes. 
So I think this horse is a little bit fast here. Um, kind of saw that the first direction. He's just a little bit pushing out there too far. So there's a difference between uh, really driving for your trot, extending your legs, and just speeding things up, right? I don't want to see things sped up. I want to see things reach and stretch and hold and float. Um, so <clears throat> kind of feels like we're holding this horse back. We're kind of on the verge of running. Um, wouldn't mind seeing him stay just a little bit more rocked up and back to us. We do see that transition happen out in front of us. Um, we are engaged here. We are using our legs. We are reaching out here. I just feel like this horse would be a lot to ride. I feel like he's a lot to handle. Um, he kind of wants to be out in front of us a little bit more. He's following that dog. That dog making a great circle for us to, uh, to move along with. Uh, really impressive. Kind of want to buy the dog. <laughs> wouldn't mind owning him. He looks like he's very helpful in our patterns, um, showing us where to go. So. See, so yeah, I think he just gets a little bit wobbly here, whether that's on the size of the arena that we had to kind of work in this space right here. I do appreciate you staying close to me um, so that we can see your legs if you'd gone all the way around the arena. So this is a harder pattern, right? Harder circle than some of the other ones that we've seen. Um, but uh, yeah, I think this horse just making it look easier. Um, again, I wouldn't mind seeing this horse be just a touch engaged, but she's doing a great job showing this one. Um, he's just making this look just a touch easier for me. Um, the other horse looks like he's a lot to handle. Looks like he could kind of get fast on me and run away. This horse looks like he would never want to run away. He'd want to stay right here, be a good boy, be a good citizen the whole way around. <clears throat> so we'll watch the second direction. <clears throat> nice, easy walk for this one. Um, picks up this trot really nice. Again, we see this horse kind of get a little unsteady when he starts out and he tends to relax into his trots as he goes. Um, we do see him engage. We do see a sweepy trot here. Like right here, you see where he starts to settle in, um, really finds his legs, finds his stride. I like this a lot. I wish he would be a little bit steadier in his head and neck. He does get a little bit undone sometimes on us. But uh, Miss Schubauer doing a good job keeping this horse really steady, um, keeping him in the bridle. Really nice. Nice, strong, solid post on her. I like this transition a lot. I like the way this horse lopes. He really stands up and is hard in his shoulders. Um, probably going to move this one into first for me. Uh, I think this other horse, even though he's, he's covering more ground, he does get a little bit down in his shoulders. Um, doesn't quite rock up over his back end as hard. Looks like he kind of pulls himself along. Starts to fall down a little bit. Not quite the same amount. And just looks like he wants to rush a little bit through there. Versus this one, he just stays rocked up and, and rolling the whole time. And this is hard to do, right? It's hard, hard to hold your shoulders up on a loose rein. So that's a, a level of training, a level of effort that we don't see exhibited in this one so much. Um, we see this one kind of leaning forward. This looks like a, a big picture, right? And, and no matter where we pause this one, he looks the same. He's just kind of there. Um, you see his top line a little bit over-engaged in this pole and maybe not dropped in as much in the, the withers. So we'll compare it to this one right here. So this horse for me gets a little bit rumbly. I'm gonna fault him a little bit for that one. Um, compared to our other horse, I think this one stays a little bit cleaner through his lope. Um, this horse, like you see him kind of fall apart in his lope here. Um, so competing for second and third here. This one probably pretty seriously our winner. Um, pretty consistently up there. Still like the, the bay horse better than the gray horse. I think this gray horse, if you push him up a little bit, uh, maybe you get that smoothness back in your lope. You can kind of fix that cadence. Maybe going a little bit too slow for, for where he's at in his training um, or where he's capable of going. But I do love the expression on this horse. I do like that he likes his job. Um, maybe we can just push on him to ask for just a little bit more. <clears throat> So we're gonna watch this second direction here. Um, again, pretty safe trot, not much happening here, not much one way or the other, just, just kind of trotting along here, just kind of plodding along. Um, looks like a great little citizen, looks like a great little horse. I would love to own this horse for my youth kid. Um, if I had a, a young daughter that wanted to show horses, this looks like the best little horse that I would want her to own. Um, just does his job happily. Um, really nice horse, I like him a lot, but probably not gonna be enough to beat this one. Um, even though this horse does get a little bit away from us, he. Uh, he does carry himself a little bit harder and works just a little bit harder. This is just a little rumbly for me, a little flat for me. Um, ends up kind of for being around there a little bit every now and then. Falls out behind. Doesn't really use himself, although he does have great expression throughout. So I wish he would lope like this the whole entire time um, and stay engaged like this. Unfortunately, he does kind of in and out of that lope. Um, we don't really, like, out here is out of it, and now our legs kind of become a little bit scrambly. Um, I wish we'd stay engaged the whole time. Like right here, you see her kind of bounce, double bounce right there. A little half break, maybe quarter break for just a little bit of that stride. Um, so I think that uh, I think that this horse can be my second place horse. 
Um, although, although I do, I do want to see this horse get just a touch more broke. Um, does look like he kind of comes out of it. Does look like a handful to ride. But um, as far as this class goes, he does stay engaged the whole time. Does maintain three beat gate. Uh, we are in a, a tighter circle than the other one, so we are having to navigate just a little bit more. But I don't love it. I don't love having to place this one second over this one. Um, I think that this horse this is really, really close for me. Probably on a given day, if we push this horse up a little bit, he's certainly going to be ahead of this one. If we rock this one back a little bit more, he's certainly going to be ahead of this one. But this one's going to be our winner for today. Um, I think uh, going for Baroque ends up going for the win today. He just, just the complete picture. Complete package, complete picture. I'll, I'll give you guys the ability to watch this as we go around. Just makes it look easy. Um, second horse, second place horse, ends up a little bit harder ride, right? Um, maybe he, uh, he's just kind of a handful as he goes around there. We can watch this one go. Um, <clears throat> I wish that he would have stayed rocked up and back a little bit more. But gonna be our second place horse. I wish I would have seen the other horses in this class. Um, I think that there was, uh, and then Chrome's gonna bring up third place. I think there were more competitive horses in some of the uh, the other classes in the um, senior. That was a really tough class. Um, I wish we would have gotten to see those horses in the open as well. But yeah, very, very good. Nice job, guys. All right, so we'll switch gears here. We're gonna move into the uh, English equitation. So we're gonna start with the novice senior ec. That's going to be just one exhibitor in this class. Um, nobody else decided to show this class, which is a shame. Um, so here's our pattern for this one. We're gonna start over here at A. We're gonna walk three strides, posting trot on the right diagonal to B. At B, we're gonna change diagonals, continue to C. Sitting trot circle to the left, stop at C. Um, pretty straightforward pattern. Uh, looking for the ability to make good arcs here, looking for the ability to make really clean arcs across there. Um, and then a good half circle over, or full circle over here. Want everybody to make sure we go straight across here so we don't cut this circle down, straight across here so we don't cut this arc down. Not looking for a triangle. Um, Want to see that good arc. So the rider's ability to guide this horse through an arc, um, that's kind of what we're looking for. We'll see how our one lonely exhibitor does in this one. Um, and that is going to be Miss uh, Summer Crosby, Whiskey River Shooter. <clears throat> So we're here ready at cone A. Would like to see this horse a little bit more bridled up. Um, wouldn't mind seeing her gather this horse up a little bit more, be ready at cone A. Uh, he's not really square with his feet. So again, we're talking about the uh, that range of minus three to plus three in this class. So if we want to get that plus three look and start out at the top of, top of the card, then um, we're going to need to really round this horse up, make sure his feet are square, make sure you're ready to go at cone A. Um, I, I do worry if this horse is in this position starting here that he's not going to get round for the rest of this. Um, I hope that he recovers from this position and gets bridled up and rounded up and learns to carry the bridle a little bit more. <clears throat> Walk is pretty clean. We're going to just zero that out. Doesn't do much for me either way. A little bit of rough guiding around there. Um, let me walk that, walk that back. We don't have much room to work here. We do have kind of a narrow area. So I'm going to pick up our, our trot here. <clears throat> let me, I lost my pattern. Hold on. So it's a posting trial on the right diagonal, so that's gonna be this leg coming forward. We should be coming up out of the saddle. Don't really get a chance to see that. Well, maybe we maybe we have a little bit of post. We don't want to see a stronger post here. Um, I don't want to have to guess at it. Because <clears throat> I can't really tell that we're posting, which is a shame. Not much difference between our sitting trot and our posting trot. So just getting up out of that saddle a little bit more, getting a little bit more balance up there. <clears throat> um, a lot of two-point work with your horse here. To where you can come up out of that saddle and really use yourself well. Um, because it's just, it's really hard to tell whether we're posting or not. Um, Want to use those legs, use that body, get that body up out of the saddle. Make this a strong post um, so we can really show off our horse here. A little bit crooked through there. Um, <clears throat> again, we do have a narrower area to ride. So want to get to where we make this half arc and we come through here. And we can really show our horse along this line. So and that's cutting that circle down. That's what I'm talking about. So if you come through this a little bit straighter, <clears throat> excuse me. Come through this a little bit straighter, then we end up not cutting this down. Maybe we make this a little bit prettier circle over here. Remember, this is going to look like a D um, with a flat part right through here and then a circle on this side. So however many strides you come out of this, however many strides we come into this, um, she does make a good circle on this side. Lots of room to come straight right here. So we can get alongside this cone and uh, make a good stop right there. <clears throat> I 
Good, so that's our lonely exhibitor for the class. So um, <clears throat> she's gonna end up winning by default, but um, do you wanna see her post a little bit stronger? <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you wanna see her post a little bit stronger? Um, I wish that she would have driven that a little bit more. Um, kind of hard to tell what she was doing there, but um, just gonna be the stronger rider. Um, a lot of two pointing and uh, going from there. So nice job, Summer. Um, things to work on. For sure, we want to want to work on getting a little bit stronger posting, stronger riding, just overall stronger riding. And then for our horses, term in terms of uh, getting him a little bit more broke, um, dropping him into the bridle, teaching him to carry the bridle a little bit more. Saw that in the English pleasure class as well. Um, not a not a huge fan of being bridled up. Not a huge fan of rounding up. Um, want to see that horse maintain good frame throughout the pattern. That's kind of what we're looking for. That's the degree of difficulty that we're talking about. Good morning, Tally. So, someone's going to end up bringing our winner there. We'll move into the open equitation. Oh, no, senior equitation, senior equitation. Nine in this class. <clears throat> we'll load up all nine. I'll let you guys look at the pattern for this one as we go. Move this over here, move this over here so you guys can see the pattern. That's our pattern for this class. Um, I'll load up all nine here. <clears throat> so the senior class ended up being a little bit more difficult than our open class last time. We'll see if uh, see if that holds true for this one as well. Pretty competitive senior class of, of exhibitors. Saw that in the uh, showmanship as well last night that the seniors just showed up, man. They were very competitive. <clears throat> All right, so for this pattern, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine loaded up, nine in the class, so we are good to go. Um, <clears throat> we are going to start at A, walk halfway from A to B, sitting trot to B, so this is going to be a little sitting trot line right here. We're going to pick up our post at B, we're going to go around C and D and E, um, doing this little serpentine, changing your diagonals as you go. We're going to stop at E, back four steps, do a 180 on the right to hind, on the hind quarters, and we're going to be finishing our pattern with that. Um, Again, fairly straightforward pattern. We're gonna to wanna to see people make good, nice arcs across here. Don't wanna see diagonal lines. We're not looking for triangles through here. We wanna see nice, clean arcs with straight lines to the middle, um, changing our diagonals in the middle as we go. And uh, hopefully we get to see that exhibited with our, our people here. Um, and for me, like I said before with the, uh, the other classes, do you wanna see the ability to navigate a pattern first and foremost, and then your equitation um, if you were to show at our level where we show at the corridor stuff, we always have pattern work and then you determine from the pattern, from the ability to navigate a pattern to the rail work where we get to see how they ride, right? So um, certainly gonna, gonna factor into it how they ride the pattern, but um, looking first and foremost for the ability to navigate a horse through a pattern rather than, uh, rather than just your, um, Lost my train of thought. Rather than just your your riding ability and how well you perch on a horse here, right? So let me. Uh, I don't seem to have the score sheet for this one. Let me make one real quick. Sorry about that. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna go senior equitation. I want to look at our pattern here. Make a score sheet very quickly. <clears throat> First, second, third arc, stop and back. here we've got that loaded up patterns there entries nine entries one two three four five six seven eight nine people ready to go let's start them off <clears throat> so right away ready to cone a like this uh do you have a hair floating around somewhere um so we are right here ready to go looks like it's, it's a good picture horses in the bridle nice 
Um, do have uh, exhibitor with a good good position. There it is. Found it. Um, good position overall. Um, looks really good. Hands are close together. Legs look good. Knees turned out. Uh, calves close to our horse. I like that a lot. Let's see how she does. So we're gonna start at a walk. We're gonna move into a sitting trot once we get halfway. Hits that halfway mark pretty nice right there. A little bit late right there. Maybe would have might might have seen her take up that sit trot a little bit sooner. Um, maybe just touch late right now is where I'd like to see that. Right here, sit trot. Horse is a little bit out of frame. Reins get a little bit loose. Want to see light contact right here. This is better. Sit two here. Change good change diagonal. Coming around. Let me make some notes as we go. I like the way she looks through the pattern. I like the way she's guiding this horse around. Um, just would like to see this horse stay a little bit more framed up. I think she's a little bit loose with her reins. Um, I think she's a little bit loose with her frame and her position here. Um, horse does turn very accurately, guides around where, exactly where she wants to. I like the way she came through that third arc. A good clean stop, a good soft backup. Maybe picks her hands up, just touch more than I'd like to see. Um, kind of resistant through this 180. Uh, we are going to pick up a minus point for that one. Um, but a good pattern overall. So just thinking about this pattern back. Um, nice and easy through here. Maybe a touch, a touch slow for that sitting trot. Just gonna zero that out for me. Um, comes around for this first arc. Pretty nice guiding through there. We're gonna give her a half point for that one. Um, I like the second arc just a little bit better. She really uses her arena here, comes around. I like the way she's looking through the pattern, using her eyes, we're gonna plus one that. Um, third arc was really nice as well. Um, again, we see her looking through the pattern, using her eyes really well, guiding around her horse. We're gonna give her a plus one for that one as well. Um, and then this stop and back. Just plus half for me. Um, wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more stop. Wouldn't mind seeing a little bit less hand. Um, and then this this 180 right, we're gonna be minus one um, because she uh, she she does lose a little bit through that turn, right? Kind of get that head flip a little bit, a little bit of a penalty there. Macy's needs to keep the hair to herself. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> so we have a senior reputation. We got the next pattern here. We got Kirsty right here. For our second exhibitor, um, <clears throat> good good expression at Cone A, right? I like the horse looking through his ears. Um, we've got the, the rider ready to go. Horse is pretty squared up. Maybe this inside front's a little close to the, the outside front. Um, that we've got uh, good contact through the reins. Hopefully we see this same kind of picture stay through the whole entire pattern. Um, for this class, I don't really care whether this horse's head is up or down, um, but he is gonna be in the reins. Hopefully he gets a little bit more rattled up as we go, but a good starting look right here. We're gonna start at the top of the, cor the card. Um, I like the way this looks a lot. Do you see her move off nicely into the walk right here? We're gonna give her a plus one and a half for that one. Um, I like the way she does that. Sitting trot, a little bit safe, maybe a little bit guarded right here. Um, we do kind of fold up in the middle. Um, do have our toes really straight forward. Uh, kind of puts our legs in a funny spot. Takes our upper leg. When our toes are straight forward like that, we end up riding mostly out of our heels um, instead of getting good contact through our whole leg. It's hard to squeeze your horse this way um, with your, your legs, much easier to squeeze like this. So wouldn't mind seeing those toes pull 45 degrees out and being right here so you can squeeze your horse like this rather than trying to squeeze them like this. It's kind of awkward to squeeze like this with your feet. So I do see a little bit off balance through that sitting trot right through here. Lower leg's got a lot of motion to it. Um, do pick up our, our trot right here. Again, because that toe was kind of straight right there, we start off our trot um, a little bit loose-legged. It does recover well around here. Um, so we're gonna just zero that sitting trot out. Um, doesn't gain any points or lose any points for me right there. Um, but uh, yeah, so sitting the first arc, we're gonna give her a half point for that one. Um, maybe leans forward just a touch more than I'd like to see um, for our post right here, coming around. Switch the diagonal right there, coming around. Looks good, again, horse stays framed up nice. I do like that a lot. We're gonna give her a plus one for that sitting trot second arc. Um, coming around here, horse leaves the bridle just a little bit, ends up pushing just a touch around that arc. Um, a good clean stop though. We give her a one for that stop. Backup is a little bit rough. Wish I could have plus that backup. Um, just a zero for me. Pivot ends up just a little bit rough as well. Um, certainly not the minus points. We're gonna just zero that one out. Um, I wish she would have stayed down in the bridle. Whoops, stayed down in the bridle and come around there a little bit cleaner. She kind of leaves. I guess a little bit rough around there. 
Um, and we see kind of the, the position, the frame change as we go. <clears throat> Yeah. All right, so let's watch his third arc one more time as we come around here. Does make a nice loop, is looking through her pattern. Maybe that little head snap into our pattern. Wouldn't mind seeing her track this just a little bit better. Um, if we're talking about going from that plus one to plus three range. Um, wouldn't mind seeing her track that just a touch more. And then this little push right here, not gonna be uh, a zero or a minus or anything for me, or, or a plus or a minus for me. Gonna just zero that out for me. Um, wish he would have done a little bit cleaner. Stopping back, um, good stop. Back's a little bit crooked, and then coming around through our, our 180, just gonna zero that out. No plus or minuses there, just uh, wish it would have been just a little bit crisper and cleaner. All right. So he's gonna move us around right there, and then we will start up with Miranda Schneider. Our next pattern. So ready, Kone, horse's head and neck down the bridle, on the frame, that's what I wanna see. Uh, exhibitor looks ready to go. I like that a lot. Does pick up that sitting trot really briskly. Uh, maybe cuts this down just a touch more. Uh, I think we had a little bit more room to go. Um, I think that we could have maybe pushed that just a little bit further. But um, a nice clean sit trot right here. Really quiet legs. Picks up into that post really nicely, very confidently coming around here. We did like this horse a lot um, in the hunter class. So we're gonna be a plus one and a half for that first arc for me. Really like the way this horse stays framed up. Um, really nicely done. Right here, second arc, I like this a little bit better. Um, tips his nose towards the direction. Maybe he just cuts this down just a shade. Wouldn't mind seeing her use a little bit more arena right here. Um, but a pretty nice, nice pattern she's got going so far. Love this looking out over her pattern, um, planning where she's gonna go. Very, very nice. Good stop into a nice clean backup, brisk backup. Um, really like the way that horse backs up into things. Um, maybe leaves the bridle just a touch for that pivot, but it's smooth, it's consistent, it's clean. Um, <clears throat> horse looks like he's super willing to do things. Um, very, very broke horse. I do like that pattern a lot. Um, that's gonna be our current winner. Um, really like most of the things that I see here. Rider executes the pattern really cleanly, really confidently, um, tipping his nose through those arcs, changing her rein, changing her diagonal. And like I said, just a little bit straight through there. End up just giving her one and a half for that one, uh, or just a plus one for that one, because I would have liked to see her use a little bit straighter line through here. Um, I think it would have made this end a little bit prettier, um, that third arc. <clears throat> yeah, you guys do look amazing. This is very nicely done. Very nicely done. Like do get a little bit of forward in front of us a little bit coming through here. Um, again, so if we're talking about moving into that uh, that plus higher range, um, would like to see you maintain a better position across there. And uh, that's gonna make or break the difference between like our plus one and a half that we are carrying most of the time um, into a plus three range. Um, just using these, these aids a little bit easier and cleaner across there, but a really nice pattern overall. I do believe that's gonna be our first place horse so far. I have my, my score's way out there. He saw his first cone a few weeks ago. He's only four. Yeah, so that's the uh, probably going to be the advantage to having just a good foundation on him, right? So um, <clears throat> a good foundation makes him look really solid, and uh, then it doesn't matter what you throw at him. He's going to look really good at it, right? So congratulations. That's a good pattern so far. All right, so we got Josie. We've seen this horse a lot this weekend, and she's shown a lot of classes. But a really nice foundation on that one. When he's done, he's going to be really, really good at that class, I have a feeling. Um, guides around really nice, really nice hunter horse. I liked everything that I've seen out of that horse so far. Just picking that neck up a little bit for your pleasure class would have put you in first place for me. All right, so this is a little bit different position that we see than the, some of the other exhibitors. Um, not quite ready to go. We don't have this horse balanced between our reins. Um, so I want to see these legs be a little bit closer too. That's probably going to be a, a theme throughout this pattern. I would guess that we're going to end up kind of far away with our calves. Um, for me, I want to maintain light contact between our calves and our reins. Um, and I just worry from this position that we're not going to be able to execute the pattern the way we want to. Um, this is just not quite the look that you want to have starting at cone A, right? I'd like to see this horse on the rein, on the bridle, um, and ready to go so he's ready to guide around. So, <clears throat> Good. So pretty tight pattern here, pretty narrow arena. So things are going to happen very quickly. We're going to have to take that into consideration as we watch this pattern. Um, does pick up a post really clean right there. Uh, but that's, I don't believe that's what we want to do. 
Yeah, I want a sitting trot all the way to B. Um, so here we're walking, walking halfway and then sitting trot. So we do end up uh, being a little bit sooner here. So we we'll be walking until we get to this point and then sitting trot to here and then picking up our post. So we are gonna pick up a, a penalty there um, for, for kind of missing that pattern, messing things up just a touch there. Um, so we'll move into this first arc, we'll kind of judge this. She's coming around, tight, tight pattern. So she's gotta make really, really quick moves across there. Maybe just a, a stride late coming into this change. Um, wouldn't mind seeing her do just a little bit more. Um, probably could have shifted this whole pattern a little bit this way um, and given ourselves a little bit more room on this side, but um, it is what it is. A little weak through our posting here. I think some of that has to do with our lower leg. You kind of see it come away from our horse as we post. Um, wouldn't mind seeing a little bit stronger post. We're a little weak through our lower leg and just ends up being a little sloppier compared to some of our other riders. But um, ends up a little bit pushy through our stop. Um, gonna just zero those arcs out for me. Nothing, nothing major, no penalties there, but no major point earning maneuvers. Um, stop him back, he's a little bit pushy through his stop and our backup, I anticipate him being a little pushy as well. Maybe not, it does round up nice for a backup. Into our 180 here. Horse pivots across there nice, does step on himself a little bit, not quite sure enough to make that crossover move. Does end up kind of putting his feet together instead of crossing over. So, um, Gonna be a little, a slight minus there, a slight penalty there for having a set up out of the bridle and not understanding how to make that move. Open his chest up, open his shoulders up as he crosses his legs over, right? You kind of see that. Um, we want to get this horse where his top line stays level across here. So we do end up kind of pushing him around um, and we, we just kind of leave the bridle as he steps around there. And then just that, that tight little steps across there. We want to stay kind of tight with his front end, so. Nice job, Josie. Do like seeing your petter horse afterwards, reward him for a job well done. Um, always like seeing that a lot. That is nice. So we're gonna have go in for Baroque next. We've seen this horse a bunch of times. Um, he is very Baroque. Um, should be a really nice pattern. Should be, should be, I expect this to be super clean. I expect it to be super consistent. Like we've seen in the rest of her rides. Um, we certainly remember this horse from the English classes that he was just a good citizen. Um, just very, very solid through everything that he does. I do like the way she looks at this cone right here. She's ready to go, looking over her shoulder, waiting for the nod from the judge. Um, certainly a good picture right here. Moves off willingly to a trot. We do lose a little bit of bridleness right here, right? Um, do want to see our horse maintain that contact down in the bridle. I like the way he looked at the cone. We do kind of abandon that look um, as soon as we get going here. So I wish he would have stayed bridled up. Um, I, now I'm fearful for the rest of the pattern going here that she's going to not have contact through his face. Um, and that will make me sad. So we're going to walk halfway. We're going to pick up our sitting, or sitting trot here. Coming around. Good sitting trot. Picks up her diagonal evenly and easily at that cone. Um, sitting trot is fairly clean. Maybe a little bit funny through that arc here. We are a touch slow. I think these longer reins end up having to pick our hands up into space a bit more than we'd like to see. I think she could keep her hands a little bit lower. I think she could guide this horse a little less out of her hands had she moved down these reins. Um, so I think that hurts our arcs a little bit. Um, kind of hard to hard to really score that against some of the other patterns that we've seen where these reins are a bit tighter. And that horse stays framed up just a little bit more. Uh, does, does end up hugging kind of tight to this cone. Do want to see that be a little bit um, more towards the middle, excuse me, middle of this pattern, maybe coming over here, just a touch more, maybe just a touch straight through there. I think this arc could have been a bit bigger, right? Maybe we could have made this a little bit bigger, given ourselves more time to come straight through here, but um, does come straight out of that really nice. I like this third arc a little bit better. <clears throat> Good clean stop into a nice backup. <clears throat> Nice pivot around there, if just a little bit slow um, and a little bit out of the bridle. So we're gonna give her a plus one for that. Um, again, so we're talking about picking up plus one to plus three. That's the range that we're operating in, right? So moving from that plus one to plus three range, if we're, we're talking about that roundness and that speed, right? We have accuracy first and speed second. So this horse very accurate through things. That's gonna get you into the positive range, right? So if you're accurate, we're gonna get you in the positive range. But if we wanna move into the plus, plus, plus range, we're talking about moving things round framed and accurate across there, not just um, not just accurate, right? So increasing the degree of difficulty by asking your horse to stay more framed up um, and going from there. Uh, yes, Darcy, novice pleasure is done. We're on to the equitation. So the, uh, the third arc right there, um, wouldn't have minded seeing, um, again, more frame, more positioning across there. 
So we go back to this third arc. I do like it. It just needs just a touch more. Um, wouldn't mind seeing her kind of pick up the pace through everything. Um, but like I said, we were expecting a good, clean, safe pattern. We did get that here. She did deliver on that. Um, she's been managing to deliver on that promise through most of her classes. Just a good, clean, safe pattern. Going to end up somewhere towards the top of this class so far. We'll kind of move her up there for now, and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, so we have... She's got Chrome next. She does show both of these horses in the class that we've seen so far. So we can see how she does with Chrome. Now we didn't like this horse as much in the pleasure class, but I anticipate that he's gonna be a little bit more broke for this class. Maybe not, we could be proven wrong, but this horse, always a happy expression. Um, this is kind of what I was talking about earlier where I'd love to see this horse be my youth horse for somebody someday. Um, I think he's just gonna be a good citizen through everything. Maybe we don't have the confidence that we exhibit with some of the other horses. Um, I think that uh, had she been just a little bit more confident, we could be um, a little better overall here, but we will see how it goes. <clears throat> horse does move off willingly. We do get a little head shake in there, uh, whether it's shaking in a fly or whatever. I like the way that horse walks a lot though. Um, really clean, really stepping up into that. Good expression through here, like we expected. Picks up a diagonal nicely. Pattern set pretty tight, so she does move across there pretty evenly. Um, coming around here, looks really good so far. Like the way this horse moves. So again, we kind of see the same thing. She uses this horse the same way she did the other one, where those reins are just kind of long, so you come up like this and you pick up your hand. Um, and you, you you just end up a little bit too high with this hand, end up kind of dumping over just a little bit too much. Um, I think tightening up on these reins a little bit will keep our hands a little bit quieter, so we don't have to make that big move across there. Um, don't really want to see that as we go around. So we do have to correct our horse right there. You see those hands kind of split wide for a second, um, right? Now, right, we end up kind of just shuffling that hand. And I think the reason why you do that is because you kind of lose contact, right? So if we stay a little bit tighter with those reins, maybe we don't have to make that move and we can stay just a little bit cleaner through everything um, and, and be a little bit more controlled, a little bit more cadence through there. Do end up with these kinds of hands kind of offset um, as we come around there. Again, so it's just something that I wish that I would have Wish that we would have been a little bit crisper, a little cleaner through this pattern. Um, again, it's just super, it's just super, like, consistent, right? A good backup. I do like the way this horse backs up a lot. We are gonna give a plus one for that. Uh, it does get a little bit tripped up through his pivot here. Kind of leaves the bridle, a little unsure of his pivot. Would want to see that top line stay a little bit more consistent, um, but he moves through there pretty briskly. Again, so just the same as the last horse, right? And I think they end up with the exact same score. Um, just super clean, super crisp across there. Um, things we liked about the other pattern better than this one. Things we liked about this pattern better than the other one. Um, but just, just ultra clean as she goes around. So let me make some notes here. All right, perfect. So we're here, we've got... Uh, Siegler, um, check the name on this one. <clears throat> Amanda Siegler with Nala. Um, really like this horse in the Hunter class. This ended up being our winner for the Hunter class. So we saw this horse do the Hunter, um, the pleasure class, and he was really, really, really broke, right? We see this this is a great first impression, right? This is exactly what we're looking for. Where this horse is looking through the bridle, he's in her hands, she looks up and accurate, she looks like she's ready to go. I love seeing that. So we are starting this pattern off on a high note. Let's see if she can maintain that as she goes through and handles this pattern. Horse moves off really nice, in the bridle, in her hands, good expression. That's gonna be a plus two and a half for me. I really like the way he moves off. Um, as she makes this first little sitting trot right here, um, we're gonna walk to halfway, right? So we come through here. Halfway mark should be about right here. It is, she moves up into that sitting trot. Good clean across that sitting trot, maybe a little bit of kick with our legs, um, but pretty accurate across there so far. Like the way she did that. Picks up this diagonal really clean. Horse guides around really well. Uh, maybe a little bit divey through here. Uh, maybe gets a little bit rushy. Wouldn't mind seeing him stay just a little bit softer through there, um, but a pretty good arc overall. Um, good riding exhibited through here. She's, she's looking through her pattern well, guiding her horse around. 
really accurate. So stop, maybe not as crisp as some of the other ones that we've seen. Um, maybe just a little bit wobbly through that one. Wouldn't have mind seeing him stop just a little bit harder than that um, and going through there. Good, easy backup though. Really nice, like the way he backs a lot. A good pivot across there, nice and crisp and clean. Um, she stays framed up the whole way. I like the way he goes through there and does that. So easy back up to beat gate right here. Really nice. Comes around. Wouldn't mind seeing her look just a little bit harder through here. She kind of gets her eyes gazing forward. Um, maybe gets a little bit tripped up through that. But a good pattern overall. Really like the way um, she did things. Really like the way that she, uh, she moved through and maneuvered everything. So really nice. It's gonna be our second place horse right now. It's just a half point separating her from first. Um, and again, we see these two going back and forth between between the, the gears here, we have second in the hunter class. This one first in the, uh, the hunter class. And now they're gonna switch spots here so far. Um, really nicely done, guys. Certainly stand out in these classes. And that's just the level of training for these guys, level of degree of difficulty. That's what I like seeing. So we'll go on to our la next to last one here. We have Chelsea. All right, so again at Kone, right? Our course is kind of gazing off into the distance here. Um, wouldn't mind seeing this horse be just a little bit more framed up um, and having his eyes on the pattern, having his eyes somewhere up here, keeping his head and neck in the middle. Um, maybe she'll recover there as she goes. Oh, she had a hand in her pocket. So maybe she'll get him back in the bridle before she begins. Doesn't really get a chance to settle here. See this elbow popped out. We're all still kind of guarding this horse. I think if she had, uh, if she had gone through and made sure that he was squared up before she started this walk line. Maybe she wouldn't have to do so much steering and guiding across here, right? Like she ended up doing just kind of fishing that line, um, kind of swimming that line. So I think that she could have been just a little bit more balanced, a little bit cleaner across there had she squared him up in the beginning. To pick up our sitting trot, he is trying to lean into the right here. So yeah, she has to make this guiding across here. Um, <clears throat> remember that you have four corners of control with your horse, right? You talk about the, the both reins and both feet. You see how she's making this move with his neck? It's his shoulder that's leaking out here, right? It's his shoulder that's leading the way through here. So she's gotta get this squared up with her leg. You see there's no contact down through here. Um, I think if she brings this leg in, she won't have to make this move across his neck and kind of guard him. Because remember, we wanna make a corner this way. So if we're doing this to steer straight, then she's gonna to have to come here to turn. Otherwise, if she comes like this and actually looks through her turn the way I'd want her to, um, she's gonna end up really cutting this down. So just something to keep in mind that um, use your leg to control your horse, right? It's his body that's leaning. This up here is a symptom of a body problem. So um, so if we want to uh, get this horse where he doesn't dive over, then we're gonna have to make sure we use our leg. Does come through there, kind of whips that first arc. Um, just unfortunately, I don't like the way that she came into that. Um, so. Again, we talked about that domino effect a couple times. So she is gonna be set up better to do this second arc right here. So hopefully we can see that. Comes through. Uh, a bit late to change our diagonal. Um, we wanna make sure we change our diagonal as soon as we change direction. So that would've been when you're even with that cone um, or maybe just a little bit before, but not when you're over there because you already have turned some before you change your diagonal. And then again, a bit late to change this diagonal as well. Horse does kind of get twisty on us, kind of pulls on us a bit here. Um, does back clean, stops nice. A little bit of head toss through that, uh, that 180 there. Horse kind of gets away from us. Um, I would like to see this horse just maybe tolerate this pattern a little bit more, tolerate her guiding him around and handling him. I think this horse doesn't really like her being like in charge. You see that when he kind of leads through here, he goes, you know, I'm gonna kind of go where I wanna go. Um, and we do have to correct and kind of recover from there. Um, eyes are down here. I would like to see you come up over here, track this pattern with your eyes so that you're not surprising him so much. Maybe we plan ahead a little bit better through here so that we aren't diving down, right? <clears throat> so that, that look down, <clears throat> excuse me, that look down was to check our diagonal. So unfortunately we don't wanna see that. <clears throat> I have not covered equitation on my live videos, no. But thank you for loving LSH Live. <clears throat> now that my clients are allowed back to the barn, we can get some of them up there to do some hunter stuff. Um, obviously, Macy with Peanut is not going to be a good hunter patter, right? But um, yeah, so now that Hannah and Diana can come out, we've got those horses that should be really good in the egg. Um, 
and uh, Holly and Piper can hopefully demonstrate some equitation for you guys. That'd be really fun. But yeah, so um, just kind of a, a rushy, pushy pattern here. Um, if we're talking about your ability to guide your horse through a pattern, um, some of that gets exhibited here that we, we don't really have a ton of control over our horse and he doesn't really love being handled. So we want to get this horse a little bit more willing and tolerating um, us telling him where to go. He kind of ends up dragging us around and kind of leading us around. So that's sort of going to affect your score um, in a, an equitation class that uh, it's just really hard to, to judge that, right? If we're saying, you know, we don't have a ton of control over him. All right, so we got Kirstie with another horse here. We have Kirstie and Dahl, I believe. <clears throat> yes, top-notch socks. So she's ready, Kone. We'll kind of see how this goes. Um, maybe a little bit out of the bridle here. Wouldn't mind seeing her tuck this horse up. Again, like it's always about that first impression, right? So seeing her tuck this horse up and be ready, Kone. She does look at me. She does look prepared to go. Um, just leaves a little bit to be desired there walking out of that. Um, again, not going to plus or minus for me, just kind of a zero there. Sit trot is really good. We do see kind of the same thing here with these ankles a little bit loose, a little bit straight as we sit trot. Um, we end up kind of pinching up here with our upper leg and not riding through our whole leg. I think if we, uh, we sit trot that line and um, get these ankles under control, we can be just a little bit tighter through there. So again, going to be a zero for us, just like we saw in the first pattern that she did. Um, just going to zero that out, not a penalty or a, a gaining points, but um, pretty accurate overall. So we come through here. This horse does stay a little bit steadier in the top line than the other one. Um, ends up being a good first arc, pretty similar to the first one that we saw. Um, she's going along, looks really good so far. Diagonal changes right at that cone, that's okay for me. Um, and a good second arc across there. Good third arc, do like the way that she looks through the pattern, do like the way that she's uh, tracking the pattern with her eyes. Um, does get these toes maybe a little bit straight for me. Wouldn't mind seeing her turn these toes out a little bit so she can ride a little bit more effectively. I think when you come in like this, that leg's gonna have a tendency to come back too far. And um, yeah, so see, we do see that leg back just a little bit too far, um, which would make this, this corner just a little bit harder. But she does come through there really nice. Stop leaves a little bit to be desired, maybe not uh, plus or minus for me, just a zero. Um, back is a little bit crooked. Let's watch that back again, make sure it's not a camera angle that we're kind of seeing. Yep, so that back leg just kind of steps into this other one. Um, does end up backing just a shade crooked. So she does the right thing. She says, you know what, that's far enough. I don't want to keep backing crooked here. But um, pivot's really clean, if if just a little bit slow. I'm um, going to give her just plus half of that one. Uh, horse's head and neck, just a little bit out of bridle, a little bit out of frame. Um, and then just doesn't have that crispness that I'd want to see across there where he's really stepping across and driving hard on there. So if we're talking about getting from that plus one, plus three range, um, Gonna pick up the plus points where he does the pattern, he does the uh, pivot accurately, but not um, not necessarily really driving across there. So I think her first pattern's just a little bit better. Good patterns overall, though. That does wrap up our class. Um, we do end up having pretty similar patterns. So our winner for this class is going to be with an eighty. Going to be Miranda Schneider. We're gonna have this horse being our winner. Um, did like the way that she did patterns a lot, like the, the expression through this horse. I like the way that she guides through. Um, really accurately driving across there. She's really clean. She's I like the pace that she keeps here. She's definitely pushing it out. She's definitely got a hunter horse here, and we see that hunter pace. I don't like seeing a Western jog in an English class. So she did really good through here, really clean pattern. Really like the way this horse goes around. Like the way she rides. Really uses her pattern well. Good clean stop and a nice crisp backup. Um, to a really smooth pivot here. We see a little bit of that leaving there, but um, certainly not too bad. She did, did uh, end up just plus one in that pivot um, as opposed to a, a zero for me. Um, if we kept that horse a little bit more bridled up and it moves across there really nice, we're talking about moving to that plus one to three range. Um, could have been really, really good. So a great pattern overall. I do like the way she, she maneuvers through that. Second place horse today is gonna be our, our team Nala here. Um, Nala doing a really good job guiding around there. These two went back and forth with the hunter for me, um, but uh, I do like the way that she rides. I do like the way that she comes through. Um, does a nice job, really guides well, and, and has that hunter pace that we're talking about. Horse just looks like she's really fun to ride, really got a lot of handle. Um, so those two, pretty close for me. Maybe just a little bit more crisp in the other pattern, right? Like the way this horse backs. 
maybe a, a slight, slight long pause right there. Wouldn't mind seeing her keep the momentum, keep the flow going, um, and we can kind of critique it that way, right? Would love to see the flow maintained through the pattern. All right, so next placing horse. So here is one, two, So now, looking through, we can kind of see here, next placing horse is going to be, I'm going to go through my notes here. All right, so we do end up with a two-way tie for third um, with these two horses. That's why it's confusing. Tied for third, um, both of these two horses, right? So we liked both of these patterns equally. Um, like we said, we see the same exhibitors, so that's that's pretty accurate, both of these horses. Um, things we liked about both patterns, things we didn't like about both patterns, but that does end up being a two-way tie for third. Very, very close between, almost had a... Yeah, almost have a three-way tie for third. Um, just a half point separating Kirsty with her first horse. This horse. Um, very, very close between these three for me. Um, just uh, just lose a little bit here on her her sit trot, right? So if she if she picks up this sit trot, if those ankles stay tight um, and we get a cleaner sit trot across here, she ends up moving to third place. So that's a, that's a close class for me. Very, very tight. I just I think that she's a little bit guarded here. I think she's a little bit weak through her legs. Um, end up just being a zero for me. So room to improve for that one for me a lot. Um, but otherwise, I really like this pattern. Very, very close to these two patterns. Um, I think these three are really tight. Um, and if, if she tightens up her legs and gets her expression a little bit cleaner, more confidence to that sit trot, then um, that's going to be a really, really close pattern. She would be a close third. But for the, today, she ends up being fifth, um, or I guess fourth, if you consider this a two-way tie. Fifth or fourth for that one. Um, but a nice job overall. Do like the way she, she guided through. Do like the way she did things. Um, just ends up being a little bit... Um, a little bit weak in that Citron. So this Chevy's rocking is going to be sixth for us today. Um, I do like her pattern a lot. I do like this horse. I do think that they, there's more room to gain here. Um, we could be just a little bit so more solid through these things. Um, by, by tightening up these reins, getting this horse a little bit more driving through here, um, we do see kind of a safe pace along here. Um, wouldn't mind seeing more of an English trot. Um, and I think these reins just get a little bit loose, a little bit sloppy for us. Um, and then we, we did uh, have an unfortunate bobble in our 180. This horse just wasn't really feeling it. Right in here. It gets a little bit tripped up. But yeah, so nice pattern overall though. Um, just room to improve and, and get better and go from there. So seventh place is gonna be curious to with their second horse. This horse right here. Seventh place horse. Again, so um, just a just a clean overall pattern. Maybe get a little bit tripped up in our stop and back. We get a little bit crooked through there. Uh, did pick up a minus point right there, and uh, would have liked to have seen that stop and back be a little bit cleaner. She does get a little bit crooked as she comes through here, right there. So then, rounding out the class is going to be uh, Josie with her next horse. Um, this one right here. Again, so it's just kind of a, a pattern where I would have liked to have seen a tighter range. She gets her hands a little bit low. Want to see just a little bit stronger riding here. Um, we do end up just getting a little bit weak out of our legs and um, a little a little sloppy here and there. Um, just want to see just want to see more, right? We want to see this horse guide through, stay in the bridle a little bit longer, um, and just maintain some consistency through there. Um, I think that. Uh, if she spends a little bit more time working this horse where he gets in the bridle and, and can really sit in her hands, it'd be a much cleaner picture overall. Cause it wasn't a bad pattern by any means. Um, just kind of outshined by some of these other ones today um, and go from there. And then Chelsea, just a, 
uh, a couple unfortunate bobbles there. It's just Mr. Diagonals um, are, are late to the party there on the Diagonals and um, does end up costing her some points, unfortunately. But um, it looks like it would be a good horse. Just uh, make sure we get some control over him and we let him, we, we get to where we can tell him where we want to go, right? Um, some of those problems man-made where we come through here and we're, we're leaving this door open for him. So he's taking that opportunity. We come through here. We see where he wants to kind of go to the right and we, we unfortunately don't block him from heading there. Okay, so we're gonna get this head and neck straight. So that way you can drive straight, right? If you have a problem right here, your car is pulling to the right. You wanna, don't wanna steer like this and just say, hey, you know what, it is what it is. Um, make sure you get those hands straight and we can go from there. So really good class overall, guys. Thank you so much. Um, and, and like we saw, like this senior class ended up being really competitive um, with all these, these horses, right? This very, very close in the middle here. Um, and then two, two standouts for me. Nice job, guys. Move into the open equitation before we take our lunch break. I got seven in this class. Come over here. I will, uh, I'll get these loaded up as you guys look at the pattern. So you guys can take a peek at it. Here is the pattern for this class. We are here. I'll load up all seven of these guys. Looks like we are going to see some of the same horses in the open for this one. Um, do wish we would have seen them in the uh, other class too, the regular hunter class. Um, I think there was a really good class of horses going in that senior class that we didn't unfortunately get to see in the open. Um, but so we got uh, this pattern right here. We're going to be ready A. We're going to walk from A to B. We're going to sitting trot B to C. We're going to pick up our left diagonal from C to D. And then we're going to change diagonals, posting trot on the right diagonal all the way down, stop and back. Right, so a little bit simpler pattern than we've seen some of the other open patterns. Um, this one, just a, a big sit trot arc. Do want to see people be able to guide their horse while they sit trot. Um, the tendency is going to be to cut this down and make a triangle over here because sitting, trotting, and guiding at the same time is kind of difficult. Um, we didn't see that in the other pattern. We got to sit trot on a straight line. So sitting trot on an arc is a bit harder for me. Um, and then we can see a good arc through here. We want to see a good straight line to a nice stop and back. Um, so this one's going to be more on the rider's ability to really drive their pattern. Um, gave you guys a um, a little bit easier pattern so that way you can increase the difficulty yourself, right? So we talked before about how this is the um, this is the story that you're given and you're going to illustrate it. So give these exhibitors a little bit more room to creatively express themselves um, and hopefully we see them take advantage of that. That's a little bit more straightforward pattern that we can really push this and, and show off our horses and show off how broke they are. Hopefully we get to see them do that. So let me go here. Move this here. Uh, I need to combine those windows again. Hold on one second. So we come around here and here. Good, score sheet is up. We should have seven in this class. I have six here and then I have one. I have to hold up one Facebook message. So let me go here. My inbox. I'm not looking for Kirsty. Okay, got it. Perfect. Cool. So we're gonna start off here. Um, I do believe Kirsty's gonna lead the way in this class. Yes. Perfect. All right, so we're ready at Kone, right here. Again, so we wanna see this horse framed up a little bit more, right? Head and neck's a little bit high, but we'll see if she maintains that consistency through the whole class. So we talked before about um, selling your pattern to your judge, right? So if we're gonna sell this, then I want this head and neck to stay right here the whole time. Unfortunately, I don't think that's gonna happen. So I, I, I imagine we're gonna see this head and neck stay up here, and then as we move through the pattern, it's gonna drop back down. So I wanna see some consistency and some levelness in our top line. Um, that as a rider is all about your hands, right? If your riders are good through their hands, they're gonna keep this belly engaged and this will all be really smooth and consistent through the whole pattern. We'll see if we see that in this pattern. Um, let me go theater mode. There we go. Good, perfect. Let's go ahead and see what we got. Do like the, time, the chance that she, uh, she got this horse in the frame. Um, so see, she is maintaining that as we go through here. 
I'm gonna pick up our sitting trot here. Sitting trot was a bit of a weakness for us in the last one. We are a little bit more solid here. Maybe not, um, maybe not totally solid. You see that leg kind of bouncing around a little bit as we go. Um, she's probably gonna have to give us a little bit more um, into that than we, we see exhibited there, but we will see what happens. So we come through, we come through here. I'm gonna watch this posting trot. Looks really clean. I like the way she does this arc. Looks really good. Horse does bobble a little bit right there. Neck is and top line are staying fairly consistent, so that must be where she wants it to be. I like that straight line a lot. Um, let me make some notes here. That was really clean, crisp, straight line. Oops, wrong one. Ends up coming through there and being super clean. Um, gonna pick up some big points for that. And um, So we come through our second loop into this right here. I like that second loop a lot, I like that first loop a lot. Um, straight line's really strong here. Everything's staying steady. I like that a lot. Stop and back. A good backup, good clean backup. Um, I'm gonna give her a, a plus one for that. Um, very, very clean. Certainly not anything to be uh, ashamed of. Would like to see this horse maybe tuck its head up just a little bit more. We're doing a little bit of play right there if we want to talk about getting that plus three range. Maybe move a little bit faster and maybe tuck up this head and neck a little bit more. We don't get that push, right? But a good clean backup. Going to give it a plus one. Um, do like the way that she went through that pattern, right? So it's a good, good pattern. Better than our other pattern, right? So we end up with 75 for that one and a 70, oh, 75 for the other one. So pretty accurate. Again, that sit trot kind of hurts us a little bit. Um, do wish we would have gotten a little bit stronger sit trot. So pretty consistently in that 75 range. Um, Want to see her move up. So we got Siegler and Nala, Amanda Siegler. <laughs> Go theater mode here. Cross this. So right here, we're ready at cone A. Again, so I really like the way that she set up ready at cone A in the first pattern. Again, we see that same kind of thing exhibited right here. She got the horses in the bridle, looking out over the pattern, ears are forward. Um, again, that's just, that's one of those things where you pick up a lot of points for me. Um, you're, you're right off the bat. Moves up forward in a nice clean walk. Do like the way this horse walks. Nice ground covering walk here. Picks up our sit trot, a little touch late, right? Wouldn't mind seeing her sit trot just a half stride earlier. Um, we do get some bounce to our elbows for the sit trot, but she does stay very close to the leather, so I like that. Um, just wouldn't mind seeing her quiet those elbows down as she sit trots, but that's really accurate. Does pick up this diagonal, maybe a little bit weak post right here as she starts off, she makes that corner, but finishes up really strong. Um, do like that second loop a lot. Um, wish that first loop would have been just a little bit cleaner. Beautiful straight line right there. Uh, if you come through here and you watch this line, she makes a second loop, gets really straight right away. Beautiful straight line, this horse staying right between the lines. Got a big hunter trot going here. Good clean lines, heels are staying nice, legs are staying nice, good strong post, angles are staying good into a pretty good stop. Maybe wish that stop would have been just a, a touch stronger um, that uh, we could have gotten a cleaner stop. But um, yeah, so still gonna pick up a point for that, uh, that stop and back. Um, really, really good backup. Uh, that's probably a plus one and a half for me. That's pretty good backup. Just if that stop would have been a little bit stronger, uh, maybe we could have picked up some points instead of zeroing it out for me. Um, and maybe we don't dribble that right through here. Dun, 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 dun. Like now we finally come to a stop. So that stop, that back for me is a plus three, but the stop itself is a zero. So we're gonna average that out to a one and a half um, for that whole sequence. Um, I think that that, uh, that backup is beautiful. Very, very good. Nice willingness in that horse. Um, that's gonna be our class leader so far. Cause that's, that's a gorgeous pattern. So this horse was a, um, yeah, yep, perfect. So we'll go theater mode here as well. All right, so we're ready at Kone. We do have this horse bridled up. I do like that picture. Um, nose is just a little bit beyond the vertical. Our reins do look a touch long here, so I will be curious to see how we navigate the rest of the pattern given this rein length. Um, hopefully our pup doesn't come back and help us through this pattern as well. Um, he may do that. Uh, but we do look really good right here. I do like the, the position, right, where our lines are really good, toes are out, uh, got good contact through our lower leg. Uh, everything looks really good right here, so we'll see how she does. This is Katie Haas. We saw this horse in the hunter class. He got a little bit rushy on us. Um, hopefully he's a little bit more controlled here, and we can see him get a little bit more rounded up as we go. 
So walk line looks really good. Here's our pup, helpful pup. Um, kind of had a feeling he was gonna come back. Citrus a little sloppy, right? Wouldn't mind seeing this, this be just a touch cleaner. Um, do get those legs out in front of us just a little bit. Um, and, and we are a little bit soft across there, right? So we're just a little bit weak across there on our legs. Um, wish we would have been just a little bit stronger through there. But do pick up our diagonal around here. A good arc, helpful pup um, coming around. Maybe a touch slow. Do get a little bit lost in our straight line. You see this horse kind of careen between the, the two reins, right? So remembering that straight line between the reins, that horse kind of bumping and bouncing in between those reins. Certainly don't see the straight line like we saw in the first pattern we come through here where there was no wobble in this horse at all. He just smoothly moves up into that from the arc. Um, that's what we want to see. Her and Kirsty both have really good straight line. No drama in the head and neck. Horse's ears stay forward the whole way. Um, very, very, very good straight line there. So um, coming through, we do we do are gonna lose a point or two for this little straight line right here, this little wobble. We have to make a correction out of our hands. Um, wish that wouldn't have happened. But a good backup after all, good stop and a good back. Um, really clean, really smooth across there. A little bit dribbly through a stop. It's gonna be pick up a half point for that one. So the second loop comes around. So let's go first loop. Make sure we check them these. this let me check something Sorry about that. Um, so coming through here, we've got uh, got this first loop through here. Again, we wish that this posting trot would have been a little bit stronger. Um, gonna be uh, a slight minus there for me because I do wish it was a little bit stronger through her legs. Second loop ended up being really good. Um, really clean across there. Horse stayed down the bridle really nice. Yeah. So that horse is going to be um, right where she is right now. I think that this pattern is a standout for me. This pattern is going to be our second place pattern. This is our third place pattern so far. We'll see how going for Baroque does. We've seen this horse be fairly Baroque. He was um, tied for third in the last class and uh, she ended up being tied with her other horse. So we'll see how they do in this one. See if we can put together as consistently a pattern as we did the last time. Um, again, I love this picture. I love this horse in the, in the bridle, in our hands, exactly where she's supposed to be going along. Like the way this horse moves up. Really clean right there. Good business-like walk. Good picture, good frame. Let me go back and make sure I watch that transition. Yeah, so decent transition. She does get her legs a little bit farther forward than I'd like to see. Um, if you draw that line down from her shoulder to her heel to her hip, right, that heel's kind of out in no man's land up here. Um, Want to see these legs come back a bit. That's going to carry through through most of the position, or most of the things that she does. Um, so I would like to see these legs come back underneath of us. We are kind of up on our knee roll here. Um, so that will be carrying through the maneuvers that we do. Sit, uh, picking up our post a little bit slow right there. Maybe we could have picked it up right now, we do end up a little bit late to that. Um, but a good little loop right there, coming around. Nice little arc. As we come into our straight line. So we can go. All right. So a good little second arc right there. We come through here. So in the second half of this arc, I think she did a better job than the first half. Um, we do lose a little bit of our control um, coming around there, which is gonna affect us on the straight line, right? So we talked about that horse being down in our hands. We talked about this was the standout straight line right down through here. This is the epitome of a straight line. This is a beautiful straight line right here. Um, do wanna see that in some of these other horses. So we'll see if she can navigate this with this horse a little bit out of the bridle here as she comes in the straight line. We are gonna have to maybe, we tuck his head a little bit to the right, maybe not quite as beautiful of a straight line, but certainly not too bad. I can give her a plus one for that. Um, doesn't end up being the gorgeous straight line, but we do end up showing it. Um, do wish he was a little bit more in the in the frame, though. 
So come along here, we'll watch our stop. Pretty accurate stop, it does come down pretty balanced. A good backup afterwards. Um, yeah, really clean across there, so we'll give her plus one for that one. Nice, nice job. Does end up with her being fourth so far. Um, Kirsty's pattern just a little bit stronger overall. Um, so this will be our placing so far. So watch her with her second horse here, with Chrome. Okay, so we see right at Cone A. She's got a great position at Cone A. She's always really solid right here. Um, toes maybe get a little bit straightforward. I wouldn't mind seeing her toes come out so she can wrap that lower leg a little bit closer to the horse, but um, pretty accurate overall. A good good expression right here. Horse is brottled up, um, a neck's a little bit high. Wouldn't mind seeing his ears come forward. That's obviously gonna be that plus three range, um, but uh, not too bad position right here. Moves off pretty willingly. Neck does relax back down. Would have liked to see that from the beginning. I think that would have been a prettier picture if that top line stays super steady. Good walk though. Citron again, we have our legs back a little bit further on this horse. I'm not sure if the other bar horse's barrel is what pulls us forward. Um, this left leg wants to stay a little bit further ahead than our right leg. Uh, we saw that in the first pattern. We saw it in the first little go there that she gets her, her right leg, her left leg a little bit further ahead than her right leg. Maybe sitting a little bit twisted in the saddle, want to pull this leg back um, and get this leg more underneath of us because we see that line just a touch off here. This is better than the last horse, but um, just, a, just a touch off. Are gonna pick up our posting trot um, a little bit sooner on this horse. We pick it up right where we want to, right at that cone. Um, so you see, this is where I would have liked to have seen her pick it up on the other horse. Um, so that was, that was much better. Good angle through here, good arc. Um, horse comes into this line a little bit straighter. Reins are a touch loose. We have good expression through there, so we're gonna give her plus one for that one. A good solid backup right there. I like the way this horse moves evenly, crisply back there. Um, that's gonna be really, really nice. Good, good pattern. Very nice job. Very nice job. So Heidi's gonna round up this class for us. And Heidi C on Martin. All right, so a uh, new exhibitor. We haven't seen this one yet today. Um, so we're gonna evaluate here. We've got a horse down the bridle. I do like that. We've got good solid contact from our elbows all the way through this horse's mouth. I like that a lot. Um, chin is just a little bit ahead of our shoulders. So we're kind of sitting here like this. Wouldn't mind seeing everything come up, picking our body up. We've got a little bit further forward with our leg than I'd like to see. Um, want to bring this leg back underneath of us, maybe turn these toes out so we get good solid contact through here. We don't have spurs on, so we can bring that leg really close to him, but maybe pulling this leg back so we end up evening out this ear to shoulder to hip to heel. Um, ears a little bit ahead of our shoulder and then our, our heels a little bit ahead of our hips. So we'll see how she does through this pattern. We'll go ahead and watch this, go theater mode. Moves off, maybe a little bit resistant, right? Doesn't really like that contact with his hands. Um, maybe could have seen a little bit smoother through that. Let's go ahead and watch this again. A little late to our sit trot. Wouldn't mind seeing her go a little bit straighter right here. So she's going to whip around. It's going to be a pretty tight little arc. There's a log sitting there. So maybe that's some of the problem. Um, we're kind of defining our arena. Um, wouldn't mind seeing her go just a little bit straighter right there. Maybe two strides straight and then loop around. Um, we'll see how she does and see if she makes this balance on this side. Yeah, so it ends up being pretty straight right there. Um, ends up being kind of a tight corner and see how we never really get straight across that diagonal, right? So we're coming across this ends up being that triangle that I talked about, right? So if you don't give yourself time to come straight along here and come along this cone and give yourself like a D instead of a, a triangle, that's kind of what we're talking about. So she's just kind of picking a path that comes through a little bit straighter like this, where we never really get this straight up and down line right through here, right? Do you like the way she loops around though? She's got good, solid, quiet contact with her hands. Um, horse does end up kind of diving that down. We do end up kind of far away from these cones. Um, would have liked to have seen her stay a little bit tighter to that as she comes through there. So we don't, we don't end up seeing that right there. Um, just wish he would have come through just a little bit better on that side. Um, and wanna make sure A little loss through that right there. Uh, maybe we could have could have come through and, and done a little bit better straight. Just leak with his shoulders a little bit. Uh, probably gonna affect our backup a little bit. 
does end up getting a little bit crooked. That's what I was worried about. Um, so if he gets that head and neck to the outside, that hip's gonna swing towards us here at this frame. Um, so he does get a little bit crooked through that back up, um, but not, not terrible. And he does back fairly willingly, right? It is, it is kind of brisk. Um, gonna just zero that out. Probably could have, could have given a, a minus half there, but uh, we'll just zero that out um, and, and call it what it is. So if we watch these patterns back, we come through here. I think this is gonna be how our pattern finishes up, right? We end up first. Oh, we have one more on Facebook. Good call, I believe. Yes. All right, so we have QC with the second horse here. I knew we had another one. All right, so we watch this. I hope I can get this less blurry. I don't think I can. We'll go HD right here. Yep, yep. Beats to it by about two seconds, Kirsty. Perfect. So we're here. Ready at Kone. I do like how she's ready at Kone. We got great expression through this horse. Um, neck is just a touch high for me, but but I like this position. If this neck stays consistent, we'll call it what it is. We'll Lost my camera for some reason right there. We'll bring this back onto us. Camera said, I quit. We're back on though, so we're, hopefully you guys get to see that again. Not sure why we decided to quit randomly, but it does that sometimes. Technology at its finest. Um, so yeah, so uh, if she decides to keep his head and neck right where it is, then we'll say, you know what? That's where she likes her horse's head and neck for the equitation, and we'll just own it. We'll say that's, that's what happens. Um, if she changes his head and neck though, that's when I would say, um, you know, we're gonna have to, uh, to, to fix this before we go on. So, um, but I do like the expression. I do like this horse looking through the bridle. Um, we'll see how she does here. Let me pull up my notes. Oops, I'm not gonna be able to make notes as I go. So we'll have to just start stop this a lot. So a good solid line right here. Does drop its neck in as it goes. Um, we do end up being a little bit more positioned right here. I see a little bit more solid leg than I saw the first time. Um, so Kiersey, there you go. So that's a, a better sit trot line through there. Um, I do like your, your stop line a little bit better, or your, your walk line, um, about the same as the last one. I do wish it would have stayed in the bridle about the same. Um, does leave the bridle right here. We are we are losing some control, some contact with our horse as we come through this pattern. Um, so now we're, we're gonna come back into it probably as we come through here. A good loop on this side. Do like the way she's coming through, like the first half of that loop. Second half of the loop, really accurate. I like the way that she comes through here. Really good line. Stopping back, maybe getting a little bit crooked right here. You see a little bit bigger step with that other leg than this one, kind of sliding those feet. Um, so probably could have picked up a little bit more right there, just gonna give you a plus half for that one. Um, he, is, he is very smooth, but missing that like just drive, right? That really step through there. Um, doesn't have that quite we see in the same other horse, right? Um, that straight line looked really good though. Maybe a little out of the bridle. Give you a plus one for that one. Um, do wish you would have stayed just a little bit more tucked up to that line. I like the way she looks out over this pattern though, using her eyes, using her body well. Very, very nicely done. So, then our final placings end up being. Right through here. Okay, so we have. Amanda and Nala are gonna be first here. Um, I think she just did a fantastic job. This is gonna be our first place pattern. I think she just excellently done here, um, really using her, her arena well. This horse stays bridled up, um, really, really drives through the pattern um, and a, an exemplary straight line to that backside. Really like seeing that. I like that she keeps his pace up. I like that she pushes this horse through this pattern, picks up her diagonal confidently, no hesitation whatsoever, guides this arc, guides this loop, coming through, good switch of the diagonal right there, accurate, coming down this line, very, very pretty line. Very pretty line. Into a good stop. 
Maybe a little bit pushy. She didn't get that plus three, but a great, great, great backup here. Um, horse looks just like a fun, fun horse to ride. This is where this class is going to shine for this horse, right? She's going to be very, very competitive in this class. Um, that's exactly what we're looking for. So I love it. Love it, love it. Very, very good. Um, second place horse is going to be... Uh, a little bit of a tie between Kirsty and Chrome, right? So we have this one and Chrome. Um, tie break is going to go to Kirsty here. I think she just, uh, I think she just had a little bit more drive to this pattern. I don't think it's quite as safe as Chrome was. Um, and then I think that having her legs forward here kind of hurts her a little bit here. I don't like how she, uh, she, she gets those legs way in front of her. So, um, I think that's going to make the difference for me. But very, very close between the two of them. Um, just wish that uh, wish that she would keep her legs back just a little bit further. I think that would help a lot. Um, so she's going to end up third. Kiersey's going to be second here in this class. Um, so we end up first, second, Kiersey's third. Or no, first, second, Chrome is third. And then, um, let me see. Second. Okay, so then Kiersey's next horse is going to be third, um, where she stayed just a little bit more solid through this horse, this horse right here. Sorry, the Facebook message is a little bit confusing. Um, so bring it through there. I do like this pattern a little bit better. Um, a little a little less than our first pattern with the other horse, but um, a little better than this because we do just end up with our legs pretty far forward here for an equitation class. Um, that is gonna affect us a little bit. Um, do wish that she would have kept that leg back underneath of her a touch more, which is going to affect her placings the whole way through, right? Um, so if we go through, we say Chrome is going to be second, going for Baroque is going to be third. Um, I think, or, or fourth, fifth, where am I? Fifth, fifth, sixth, then rounding out the class um, with Heidi. Yep. So in this, this order here, Katie. Yep, yep, so there's our order. So we got first, this horse right here, um, Amanda and Nala, beautiful job. Second going to be Kiersey with her first horse. Um, third going to be Kiersey with her second horse. Fourth going to be Chrome and um, uh, Chrome and Miss Schubauer. Fifth going to be going for Baroque and Miss Schubauer. Um, sixth going to be Katie Haas and Hustling Two Stripes. And seventh going to Heidi C on Martin. Cool. Very, very good. There's a seven in the class. There's a seven entries. That's our, our, the end of our English section of this show. Um, I'm going to take a little lunch break here and then we'll come back. We'll finish up the Western portion and we will go probably until it's done. Um, I imagine it take us the rest of the afternoon to judge the rest of this. Um, thank you so much for sending your videos in guys. Very, very good cause doing the heart, uh, equine center there. Um, the heart virtual horse show, show your heart out series. Um, really cool, really fun to judge. Uh, really, really good English horses, right? We see this horse and the other horse, um, super competitive. I like these two a lot. This horse is going to really, really push these equitation patterns. Um, hopefully you guys learned something about equitation. Hopefully you learned something about hunt seat um, and kind of how I go through and judge patterns. So we'll take a little half hour long lunch break, try to meet back up at one o'clock um, so we can finish this show up today. That'll be kind of our goal. Um, we've got a few Western classes, an in-hand trail and a ranch riding. Um, so we'll see some horsemanship this afternoon, see some ranch riding, and see uh, just one in-hand trail. Yeah, and we can go from there. So six in the ranch riding, four in the senior, and two in the novice senior. So that should that should take maybe two, three hours to judge. So we can go from there. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you after the break. We'll uh, I'll stop this stream and I'll start it back up so you guys can log back on for the next one. Um, I can give my camera a chance to take a break because it was trying to die on me. Um, and hopefully we can have it with no hitch in our giddy up. You're very welcome, Amanda. Very, very welcome. Um, and hopefully everybody enjoyed the feedback. And I will see you in just a little bit. I'll be live. I'll let you guys know. We'll start up just a few minutes before, usually about five minutes before. Um, so if it's not quite one o'clock, it will be right around there. Awesome. Very good. See you guys in just a little bit.